A boy, no more than twelve. A boy who sat behind a glass window with three others, all waiting for their chance to speak. It was a joke for them, some fun they'd forget, but in that recording booth, in a bright museum in London, it meant so much more to that boy of twelve. To speak and be heard, to become alive in audio, a mere taster of what was to come. A friendship born many years ago, one that stood the test of time. A shared interest would grow and turn into a combined effort. A combined effort would manifest into a project. That project turned into what we have now. A podcast for the fans, by the fans, fueled by more interaction. To witness the first time we saw the pageantry, how the stars lit up the ring. To the first time we heard the glass shatter. To the first time we saw an eyebrow raised. To the first time we heard the pipe bomb. To the first time we finally saw a dark family face a shield of justice. We shared these memories with you within the hearts of all wrestling fans. And through hard work, through hardship, through pain, to build ourselves from the ground up to become better, to fail and to learn, and then to succeed. We are here because of you now, here because you made us. There are not two hosts of this show. There are over 450 for your voices heard and it is shared. We have truly loved every moment where we could say those words from this day to the next day over the trials and the tribulations. We may have felt the harsh bang of back against Matt, seen the rise of greats and the fall of legends. We've experienced magic and tragedy, witnessed the birth of heroes, and throughout all of wrestling's iconic moments, this one belongs to us and us alone. Our own achievement, our own reward, our own podcast. And so we're here, 100 episodes into our quest for podcast domination. We won't stop. This is just the beginning. Two boys. No more than twelve. Two men. No more than twenty-eight. Come the bad weeks. To the good weeks. We'll always want to say those words. Say the words all wrestling fans say to each other. But the words that encapsulate our show... So we'll say them now, not for the first time, or the last, but to begin the next chapter of this experience. It's time, and just like a whisper, it starts. We'll say those words right now. Oh, Lordy, Lordy, YouTube! Don't you dare be sour. Clap for your world famous 100th episode champs and feel the power. It's Let's Talk Wrestling. Yes, it is. Welcome to the Let's Talk Wrestling podcast. You don't know history. You don't know wrestling. You don't know matches. My belly is just a little big. My eyes is just a little big. But brother, I am bad and they know I'm bad. You are truly the future of Lucha Underground. I got it, I got it. How about a little heel turn? And no, if, if they piss somebody, if they tick somebody off here, well then, you know, there goes their career. Well, don't piss anybody off. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think my co-host has some experience being a preacher after that escapade. That's the only thing I can say. Welcome, everyone, 
of course, to the Let's Talk Wrestling podcast, episode 100. We are finally here. This is the episode we've all been waiting for. It's a big celebration. I have got everything laid out for you here and we're going to go all out on this show it's going to be a lot of fun you're seeing all this stuff brand new brand new graphics new intro don't worry you won't have that uh that long inspiring fake intro that we have for you there before uh <laughs> before matt just shows to uh to choose how 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 much of a biggie he can be on on this show um so yeah let's talk wrestling 100 we're here the wait is finally over and we've got obviously a few little extras for you here on the show we'll be a longer podcast than than a majority because it's jam-packed with the little extras that we're going to talk about and one or two little things that you may not be expecting shall we say my name as the host of this show for 100 episodes that still feels crazy to state mm. is turbo tony and i don't do this alone i do this with a man of whom without him we would never get to 100 episodes, so I'd like to personally thank Matt Marsander for being my co-host on all the episodes preceding, but especially on this 100th special episode. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. And how can I not thank you too? Oh well, thank you for that. Yeah, I don't think to get it's like we're doing, doing more of the legwork than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I enjoy it. You know, you're you're like the little the little spice you know, on, 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 on the meal that makes it, is, mm, yeah, that's what makes it memorable, that's what you are, you know and I'm just basically the big wallop of everything that you have to yeah, yeah. I don't know where I'm going with this to be honest uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what, what is it, is uh, I can't remember the line that they used, it was some movie where it was like, you know, divided we can be destroyed but together we are strong or something along those lines so, uh, yeah. you know uh, along those lines, but uh yeah, very special episode. We have lots of stuff planned for you on this episode. And to be honest, guys, this isn't so much an episode. This is more like a celebration for myself and Matt. And it should be for you guys too. Because you guys have been... I know we were being very corny earlier on in the intro saying that there's 450 hosts of this show. But we don't want to understate our appreciation for you guys. And we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you we would be able to interview the likes of you know solomon that we did a few weeks back which was awesome if we didn't have the fan base we did um and it's awesome for you guys to interact with the show we're always proud to interact with the show for you guys to interact with us as much as you can and uh we do have something that may let you interact just a little bit more because we do love that function now i think that's one of the things we're most happy about with the show is how much we speak and we answer questions from our fans. I think that's the one thing that you get a real yeah, kick out it, of. Yeah. Matt, before we get to that particular announcement on this show, on Let's Talk Wrestling 100, what is the Twitter handle that they could contact the Marsander Mafia directly? Uh, you mean uh, at Talk Wrestle Pod? It is. It is. Oh, yes. At Talk Wrestle Pod. And uh, I know you've enjoyed giving us that Twitter handle. You've handled the hell out of that Twitter, that Twitter handle, I might add. Um, but... You may be thinking, well, come on, Tony. Come on, Matt. I, I, I leave comments on the show. I tweet you from time to time. I, ch- I, I, I follow you on Twitter. But there's more. There's more you could be doing to accommodate my Let's Talk Wrestling needs. And we've heard you. Believe me. Um, now we, have this, we are delighted to announce that the official Let's Talk Wrestling Facebook page is now live as of now. Are you hearing us right now? It's live. Yeah, right now. That's how quicker. Bang, like that. You don't even know it's coming. Oh, yeah. That's how we do it here. It goes under the uh, under the URL. You can find it in the comments section below. It's actually on the new graphics you can see. But I'll just give it for you here. It is facebook.com slash Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. You go to that page. You like it. You can send us messages. You can leave comments. And on that on that uh, Facebook page, we meet myself, Matt, even my, writing up our own articles that will be exclusive to that Facebook page. So you can get articles of written articles of what we think about wrestling at the moment. And guess what, Matt? We're allowing our fans to submit articles to us to be published on our on our on our Facebook page. That's yeah. right. You guys can do an article. Doesn't matter how long, how short, what it's about. As long as it's about wrestling, you can submit it to us in a message. And if we like it, then we'll put it on our, on our list of, of articles on, on there so anyone can go view them whenever they like. So that's awesome. That's a way that you can not only um, 
talk to us and you know get more or less arrest and get updates of what we're doing um that you can actually become let dare i say it part of our uh, of our show in a way right and if it's good enough hell if it's even that good then we'll probably even have a conversation about it on the podcast there's a lot of ways that we can interact with you here so we're really excited about it. matt i know you're excited about the facebook page and the fact that you and me both will be monitoring that that should be a lot of fun right oh yeah it's gonna be good it's gonna be good um but yeah i'm looking forward to see what we can do with that so go on to it and like and like like the page and uh, like i said it'd be great if you'll go on there and um you know, just get share the words and it'd be a great great beacon for us to go forward but that's awesome to be able to announce that also with the t-shirt competition that is done we said that last week winners has been cho- the winners have been chosen and, and, and stuff is being sent out uh, as far as i know anyone in regards to that didn't want to be named and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna you know, people of dick if they ask not to be named and i just go <laughs> fuck it <laughs> just yeah. do it anyway so james roberts didn't want to be named <laughs> yeah. oh oh shit Oh, and, I did it. And Matt, we're only doing this in one take, so we're fucked, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, that's an alarm stat. Well, obviously, we're going to do, be doing a lot more competitions going forward. Uh, and uh, our personalised shirts for um, NXT London have been ordered. They're coming out soon, so you'll be able to see us pictures of all them. The actual personalised host shirts, as we're calling them. They're yeah. going to look awesome because they're slightly different design, right? But they're awesome. Uh, so what we got on the show this week? Well, we've got a Matt. Do you want to? Say, or maybe I'm being a bit too early when I said this, but we've got a humdinger of a show here this week. For the fans. <laughs> of course, it's Let's Talk Wrestling 100. Of course, it has to be. We've got the news that we're going to be talking about this week. And if you guys have had your head buried in the sands, you missed one hell of a news outbreak this week. Oh no! And we're going to get to that soon. You guys probably already know what we're about to talk about. That. Uh, we also got the fan feedback questions left by you, the fans, to be answered on this special show. They will be answered here this week. We've also got the WWE Draft 2002. Oh, yes. We're going to be making a few little comments in regards to that. And uh, you can get, obviously hear our thoughts in regards to that show. We're back and watched it this week, and I have some thoughts about it. Of course, we've got NXT Report Card. And then we're going to be looking back at Let's Talk Wrestling Episode 1. The very first episode of the show, and uh, myself and Matt will get all nostalgic and talk about some of the funnier things that we spoke about at the launch of this show. Back yeah. when we were lucky to get 20 views, and look where we are now. Let's, get, let's eat our own humble pie. You know, that's, that's where we're going about it. And of course, because we have to, we will review Monday Night Raw, as we always do. And the uh, of what will be the last Monday Night Raw, as Seth Rollins being the world champion. Mm. Mm. I think that's quite a good segue to go into our news, don't you think, Matt? Yeah, I think that does. I, I, I think that's a pretty good one. Guys, uh, if you haven't heard already, or if you have, Rollins is injured. He injured his knee in a live event up, up in Dublin, not too far away from where I am, funny enough. And uh, he's literally destroyed his knee. He has torn his ACL, his MCL, and his medial meniscus, which, Matt, as you know, are injuries that once you get, you rarely feel the same again in the in the affected area. Yeah. Um, and he's going to be out for round about six to nine months. Matt, this this is obviously this is horrendous for not just Rollins but for WWE. Uh, what 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 what? what, what? It's, it's just, like the worst part is, it's sort of like sort of just like wake up and just like Rollins like out first, like what? Mm. No, this is terrible. It is. I think it's uh, obviously WWE are going to be. Um, I'm sure when the news came out about the prognosis of his injury, I'm sure the alarms were flaring over in Titan Towers, and they're wondering what the fuck's going to happen in crisis mode. The bunker's gone down. It's almost like they've been been hit because you know it's their long term champion out with an injury, and in this particular uh, in this particular area as well. It's not just that he's a long-term champion, and you know he's, you know that you know he's he's one of the faces of the company now. He's the biggest heel, right? It's the it's the timing of the injury, right? In, in yeah. lots of different ways. I'm sure that he was due to drop the belt to Reigns this month. I'm sure it was it was meant to happen. I've said that last week. But not only that, man. That's not the, that's not really the timing I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is the fact that Orton's out 
Cena's gone. Well, was it Orton's out injured? Cena's taken some much needed time off. Mm. Like we don't have Lesnar, don't have anything. No, no. So now it's no. I'm not obviously they've, they've got some stars, but it was along the lines that you thought that you know. I am sure this week with this injury coming out, which obviously sucks for Rollins. He's been such a tear. You know, he's been doing as good as he can be. Um, I, you know, it's it's one of those things where obviously Cena's gone away to try and look at other. He's trying to look at other avenues for when his body eventually tells him, I can't do this anymore. He's got acting. He's got TV shows. He's got whatever. Yeah. Whatever to keep on going, right? So I'm, I'm sure that's what he's doing now, right? That's the rumours, at least. So I'm sure he's had a phone call over the course of the last few days from Vince McMahon. John, we need you back. Rollins is injured. We need you to be the champion. I'm sure John Cena is probably looking at it like, well, actually, I need to do this for me. So... Yeah, I, I was reading um, JR's thoughts on the situation. He was like, I don't think they should give anyone a call and try and drag him out. No, no, no. I, I think they've got a wealth of, star, of, of stars they've refused to make, you know, uh, in the mid-card, that they can at least give a shot to. And hopefully this tournament that will crown a new champion at the pay-per-view will hopefully spread a little bit of light on that. For me, there's only two possible winners of the belts. Yep. One of them is Reigns. That's the one I'm betting on. And the other one is Ambrose. But I yeah. think the only way Ambrose wins is if he turns heel against Reigns in the final. That's the only way I see it going down. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, this has thrown a lot of the creative in, in the works. I mean, come on, guys. Rollins, on his own, could take up like 90 minutes of Raw. So how old they could have to rewrite every Raw, right, that they had planned? Yeah. Plans. Triple H, his WrestleMania plans was to go against Rollins as well. So that's gone. He's he, Rollins going to miss Mania. You know that's that's a big deal, right? That's a big thing for him that he's going to miss Mania. So all these plans that W had laid out was basically the spine of it all had one constant, and that was Seth Rollins. And now he's gone. You know, that's the, that's the thing though, especially when the ch- with the champ, it's just sort of like so much sits on his shoulders, and now it's all of a sudden it's just like. Well, now what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, look, it's obviously even the first time WWE's been put in this situation. I think it's one of the times that they've been put in the situation where they haven't had a lot of their their big stars, their big drawing it's, stars. Yeah, I mean, the one thing available. I find quite funny is just like you get this comparison. It's just like didn't it wasn't it before another Survivor Series when it's like there's no champion, and that's when The Rock got the belt. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it, uh, one, one of the things that I I think that. Um, sucks for Rollins personally I mean obviously just getting the injury sucks for him right I mean, of course at six to nine months missing you know work is obviously going to suck for the guy right maybe he will recharge his batteries but that is a long time out um, yeah w- one of the things that I think that will suck for him though is that he's got to hand this belt over and I'm sure he was looking at him losing the belt to Reigns as the perfect end to the title reign he's had this year. It's almost like that journey that he's worked so hard to do has come to an end. And you can wrap it up, do what what the heel's job is to do, which is to finally put over the face, make them look great. And he wasn't able to do that. He was literally just a couple of weeks away from from accomplishing his final task as champion, which is obviously one of those things. I don't know about you, Matt. I'm a completionist. And it's not just in games or anything like that. If I do the dishes and I leave it 75% done and I leave a few plates and I leave it for whatever reason, those extra plates will like fuck with my head for the rest of the day. Like I need to complete things, you know, I need it, everything to be finished. You know, that's it. That's the way it, can't, it, it can't be just half done. Yeah, exactly. So I hope that Seth isn't like me in any way. Otherwise he's going to be like banging his head going, I shouldn't have lost to rain. I should have lost to rain. <laughs> um, but... Of course, I'm sure he's got other things to think about. So, Matt. Obviously... There's one kind of plus side. Go on. They were trying to find a way of making him face. Yeah, yeah. I, do you think that, this is a yeah, thing that, like, Rollins coming back next year, whatever time he does, whether it's between the six or nine months, he's got to come back face, right? Because surely by then... I it, I don't think it really matters how they try and bring him back. He'll he's, come back face. Yeah, he's gonna because suddenly everyone's just like, we missed Rollins! Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, it's absence lets the heart grow fonder. It's not just so much that. 
is that he's out for six to nine months. That's far too long for the authority to, in storyline, go, okay, well, we'll just wait for Rollins to come back. They're obviously going to yeah. pick a new face <laughs> of the WWE, right, or the new future. That could be Dean Ambrose. It could be Ambrose, and Ambrose goes heel, wins the belt against Reigns, and then you've got a storyline built in, the betrayal, Reigns has had the betrayal again from the one person he never thought it would happen to. Or Reigns just wins it, and eventually they pick someone for the authority. And then it's just a built-in storyline, because when Reigns comes comes back, he doesn't have to be still heel. He can come back and be like, you replaced me, that's insulting to the person I was, I'm going to show you how good I am by beating your new guy. And that's the storyline that you can run with there, so... Yeah, it obviously sucks for, for, for Rollins. It's a horrible situation. I don't, you know, I don't envy WWE in this situation because I imagine everything they've had planned is all done. They've got to get a new match for Triple I think, H. I think a lot of people who have, um, there's, there's a few balding people now because it's just like, what do we do? Yeah. Rip it all out. Ripping out isn't it? I'm sure Vince McMahon was, uh, was storming around his office upon hearing this news and none too happy yeah. about this. But... It's just the nature. Sometimes that happens. I mean, you can actually go and view the video of him getting injured, and it's grim. It's not. It doesn't make for someone who Matt knows. I have broken my leg to the po- to to the point of beyond repair. That is ugly for someone to see that right there. Yeah. Bad. Especially when they showed all the footage of it, and you're like, Ugh! oh, yeah. It's it's not nice. And uh, yeah. So Rollins, six to nine months. He's gone. Championship is up in arms. I'm sure that Reigns will be the will be the new champion. They're just going a different way around doing it, and we're going to see how all these plans changed. I'll be interested to see how the format of the show goes because nine times out of ten, you've got that Rollins. You've got all the Rollins segments that they always do every single week. Are they just going to literally just put someone else there now to just basically fill his roles, or will they change things up a bit? It's like, man, I, I can't remember the last time someone getting injured impacted so many things to the core amount of the show. And people are going to realise how much Seth Rollins was embedded this year into Raw, you know, and into every segment he had a hand mm-hmm. in, the main event, the opening segment, the transitional segments. He was almost in all of it. So, yeah, we're going to see how it all goes from there. Hopefully, I hope for the guy... Obviously, we love Rollins here. We gave him rest of the, of the year last year. Um, well, obviously, we hope he gets a good recovery. And he does eventually look at his leg and doesn't think that will never be as good as it, what it was before. More than likely, that will happen, but we can hope that that isn't the case. Uh, Matt, oh, are you ready for this? You caught this this week. We've had a small conversation about it, but I think it's time that we bring this up. People, you might know of the PWI 500. You know where I'm going with this now, man, don't you? Yeah. You know where I'm going. Uh, before, before I do this, by the way, I need to take a drink of my alcohol because, yeah, I think I think that's best. Let me, let me do that for a sec. What did you, do? What did you bring for the, for the show this week? Uh, I've been suffering with the stomach problem, so I've oh, got no. water. I have water. You have water <laughs> on this? Oh, no. Oh, well. Well, I've got a few. I've got, you know, the beers i've got a, i'm at the moment i'm drinking a fuck off massive one of smirnoff ice just to play it up a little bit in, in between the beers every now every so, okay. so. <laughs> well, I, well you can't say i'm drinking beers like, you know. there's smirnoff ice in a beer though <laughs> so does it mean i can enjoy other things to clear to, to 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 enjoy my palate you know along those lines don't be don't be a beer nazi you don't be like a drink nazi um, so, PWI for 500. For those wondering, myself and Matt don't give a shit about the PW500. Right? Some people do to their own detriment, but it's a stupid list. And the reason why I say that, I don't have a problem against PWI, you know, for a thing insider, but their lists are basically based on what they believe is uh, along the lines of drawing power. Um, main, it's what WWE want. Mainstream. It's like, you know, they've got their own sort of curriculum on how, how I'm doing it. And I don't agree with how they do it. But sometimes they do a list that is so stupid that I have to talk about it. And here is one of them. Yeah. And I've got so many, Matt, I've got so many reasons. When this came up, and I'll explain what I'm getting to. When this came up, I wrote fucking tons of reasons why this was a stupid 
ass decision that they made. So you may ask, so who was the number one woman this year on the Pro Wrestling Insider list? And that person, of course, is Nikki Bella. Now you may say, but wait a minute, Tony. Of course, she was women's, you know, she was Divas Champion. She broke the record. She was champion for most of the year. Well, there's one woman that should easily overdo what she's done. And that's Sha Sasha Banks. Without question. Matt, I'm guessing you're thinking exactly the same thing as Sasha. Yeah, definitely. Easily. Uh, there's quite a few that I'd put above. Yeah. You know, I, I put Bailey and Sasha yeah. above her. And if you want to go for, oh, you know, mainstream power and all this other, then you can put Nikki as third, maybe along those lines. Now, put, let's, 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 before we get into this and why it's such a stupid decision and we're going to all the reasons why Sasha Banks is clearly the number one best female wrestler around at the moment, okay? It's certainly better than Nikki Bella, right? Before anyone gets into yeah. an argument about it. People might say to me, oh, but Tony, Nikki is more of a draw than Sasha is. Sasha's only been on the main roster for a little while. And my response to that is, no one, and I mean no one, buys a ticket to a WWE show to see Nikki Bella. No. No one buys a, a ticket to see Nikki Bella. Nobody. My wife, right, you, so people are going to, but what about Total Divas? That's really successful, Tony. My wife watches Total Divas. She, 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 she likes it. She watches the E! shows, you know, like the Kardashians and fans of, of those sort of shows like Total Divas, Matt. They love Total Divas. That's why it's such a success. You see all the relationships and Nikki Bella, man, she, she's with John Cena on it. So she's she's on such a thing. drunk. Right, she's, She's well, that's more like Brie, isn't it? But anyway, regard. But what I'm saying so is, I don't know. She's one of the the big names on that show, so of course, of course, she's got that mainstream stopping power. Well, the problem is with that, all those fans, including my wife, do not watch Raw. So if you want to call it the pro wrestling list, then sorry, Nikki Bella's Total Divas antics do not factor because it doesn't make her any more popular. People do not buy tickets to see Nikki Bella in a wrestling show. They just don't. No. People were more than happy to purchase the network, were more than happy to go to Brooklyn, more than happy to buy tickets for Full Sail University to watch Sasha Banks wrestle. They put money down to watch this woman do her stuff. Yeah. Right? I mean, the fact that it's even just that, it's like, oh, the more the draw. She's been more groundbreaking as well. Yes. What's Nikki done? Apart from, like, she's, okay, she's held the Divas title for the longest. But she's not done much. She's, like, done her to pull, she's tried to pull twin magic every now and then. Yeah. That's well, the only real difference. But you've got, like, people like Sasha, who was just like, oh, is that the first ever main event? Like, of a, of a WWE special? Yeah. Oh, I think it was. Was it an Iron Man match? Yeah, I think it was. Not only that, like, Sasha's had... Two, right? Of Easy the, match of the year candidates. Sorry, let me take that back. Three of a, ma a match of the year candidates this year. That's not taking account just the women. That's the men as well. I know, I, I know it's maybe a spoiler for next month's LTW awards because Sasha's going to be walking away with quite a few of them, by the way. If no one gets a better match by the end of next month, I already know that Sasha Banks is winning match of the year. All right? So... Yeah, right? She's, like, she's cleaned house. And the only thing Nikki Bella has done as a champion this year is show uh, and pioneered a division that eventually became so stale, so horrendous. So quickly as well. Yeah, so bad that WWE had to stage a revolution. They had to bring Sasha Banks onto the main roster to save her ass. They had to bring Charlotte onto the main roster. They had to bring Becky Lynch onto the main roster to save Nikki Bella. That's what they had to do. Because the women's division was at an all-time low. No one gave a shit, right? People care about the, the people are willing to pay. This is the most ultimate thing, right? People, this, the, 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 uh, this should be the argument, right? For why Sasha Banks should be number one and Nikki Bella shouldn't be even close, right? No one would buy a ticket to see Nikki Bella wrestle. Lots of people would buy a ticket to see Sasha Banks. That's the only reason that matters. That's the only reason that makes sense because 
ultimately wrestling is an entertainment sport. What's the most important thing in wrestling, Matt, in terms of, of booking it? To get the asses in seats. That's Nikki it. Bella does not get asses in seats. Sasha Banks. Well, what was it um, Austin said? As long as, there's a, as, an, as long as there's an ass every 18 inches or something. Yeah. You know, like... That's the most important thing. <laughs> That's the, I thought this was the most... Obviously, the reason I gave it is because she's the longest-running Divas champion. She broke records. No one liked any of the matches that she had. People were utterly bored of her. The fact they had to bring three women up from NXT to save that division, and it's still not saved. There's still tons of problems with it. Um, what... You know, like, oh, congratulations. You are the you are the face of a, of a division that's the worst division in WWE and was far beyond, you know, where the, the division was. It yeah. was even worse than where it was now. So, yeah. The way I'd go is Sasha, Bailey, Nikki. If you're doing it, if you're doing it like that, easily. But I thought it was absolutely ridiculous. This is I, guess their, I guess their only deciding factor was just the fact it's on NXT. Yeah, that, that must have been the, the main thought of what about it is oh because she's on the main roster she's the she's the uh, the main rosters champion that she's been for so long that doesn't get no one people care more who's the NXT women's champion than they do the divas champion oh that, yeah that is a fact right no one cares who's the divas I was about champion. to say something that's like I don't care who it is now but then I remembered it's Charlotte and I do care about Charlotte but people cared more that she was NXT champion more than she was divas champion let's, oh, let's get real right. So I thought this was absolutely ridiculous. And any, any of our any of our fans will tell you, like if I were to ask people, hey, if I asked BX girl, she'd definitely give me a, a long lengthy reason why I'm right here. But people would definitely, if you gave them a choice, you want to see Nikki Bella have a match against anyone in the world, or you want to see Sasha Banks have a match against her, they're going to take Sasha Banks every single time. Oh yeah, easily. Every time. So it's it's ridiculous. I thought now, like I said, this the, the PWI list. If you're into it, fair enough. I'm not going to blast you for it, but by no means has it ever been any sort of a good indicator about how good someone is or even how successful someone is. Let's just be yeah. honest. So I wanted to bring. I thought that was one of the most moronic choices I've, I've had in ages, but uh, but they have their reasons, and I'm sure they will stand by them, like you know, like decent people do. Um, I'm. I'm not going to knock other people uh, uh, for having their opinion, but I can, you know, I can explain the reasons why their opinion isn't valid, right? Is isn't isn't correct, or you know, people are free to bounce back on that. But I'm sure a lot of people would agree with me here that there's only one person that that deserves. Let's put, let's put this another way, Matt. For our diva of the year, um, woman of the year, sorry, as we call them, I hate that fucking term, diva. Yeah. For for woman of the year. Right, that we're going to be doing next month on the second year anniversary of this show, is Nikki Bella even fucking close to being even nominated for being a woman of the year? Like, to me, she hasn't even got a chance. To no. me, you've got three women really that are close, and believe me, one of them is ahead of ahead of the rest. I already know who's woman woman of the year. I think it's pretty blatant to know what who I'm talking about at this point. So. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it there. What, what, what's your thoughts on this? I mean, like, you, you've never really looked at the PWI as anything. I've not been a PWI interest. No. Um, oh, I just, I can't. <laughs> it, it, it's it, it's been it's all bullshit. It's it's just it's draining. You know, <laughs> it is. It is unfortunately more PWI just. What difference does it like? Oh, well, let's just throw it out there. It's like, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think I think that's the shame that that list like literally has no relevance anymore in the wrestling world. People yeah. used to care a lot what was on that list. Now, nah, that's not so much. And maybe with the revealing of kayfabe and, and you know just social media in general, people are more active and giving their opinions across. So people just don't think care about it as much anyway. But but still. Uh, let us know your thoughts on that. Where what what you, what you would have ranked, Matt? But um, yeah, I, I I wouldn't have put Nikki first. Not not not, not with my opinion. <coughs> but oh no. Hey Matt, what's up, pal? You you look a bit pissed off. Oh yeah, I'm, uh, I've been watching uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. And my pick to win was booted, and um, that bitch did not bring it game day. Oh, that sucks, my man. I know you're an avid member of the drag queen community. What? But but I've got news for you, Matt. You don't have to be locked into long season commitment at all. There's a site that can change things up. What? Sorry? No, don't 
Don't do it. Need to change your drag queen on a weekly basis? It's time to use DraftQueens.com. You can earn big bucks with DraftQueens.com. The prizes are bigger. The excitement is bigger. The padding is bigger. There really isn't a site like this, right? Pick the drag queens. Pile up the points. Pick up the cash. And if you use the promo code Matt is a crossdresser, you can get 10% off. Oh, hell yeah. Matt, we've got fan feedback. Are you ready for fan feedback? Yeah, oh, of course I am. Questions. This is the bit, my man. This is the bit that you and me love answering questions. And we've got a few, got a few humdingers this week. Oh yes, from our fans. And one of them is from Alex from Wrestling Boom. Who, who, by the way, he's been in exemplary form, and he's actually doing a Q and A session on his blog um, next Tuesday, I believe Tuesday. And we asked, uh, well, I asked him a question that he's going to answer on there. So if you guys want to check that out, you can you can go do that. So, uh, but his question is, who do you think is the most underrated indie wrestlers since two thousand and five? Now, this is a slightly loaded question because this is obviously all a matter of opinion. And indie wrestlers, by nature, you know, they're hard to find. They're hard to get footage on. You know, it's hard to go see live. That's just the nature of indie. So there's bound to be people here that are absolutely think are absolute locks for this list. But obviously we're not going to pick because it's just how much time that we've been able to catch these guys at the corner of our eyes yeah. here, here or there, right? And people's ideas of what indie is can sometimes be a bit misconstrued. Some some people don't think Lucha Underground's indie. People don't think TNA's indie. People don't think Ring of Honor's indie. Really. But I'm just I'm literally just gonna give my list and then Matt you can add in a few extras that you might think may go here. So first one is Nigel McGuinness. It's a shame that he's not been able to get bigger and I think he has injury issues. Obviously that's that's Well that's been issues long standing there. though, hasn't it? Yeah, that's that's the problem. And you'll hear actually a lot of him talking about um sorry, I think Daniel Bryan made a few references in him in his in his book about the matches that he enjoyed having with, with, with Nigel McGuinness. Yeah, it was wasn't it he got a chance to go to WWE but because he left his arm to just heal rather than get it fixed. Yeah, he got he basically got caught out by the screening. So yeah. he wasn't he wasn't put in there. And obviously things just never went that well for him after that. But yeah, he, he was good, right? If you look at some of his matches, I haven't even caught a lot of them. But I think he deserved a little bit more fanfare than ultimately he received. So, Nigel McGuinness. Chris Hero, who was Cassius Ono in NXT for a little while, but got a bit overweight, a bit out of shape, and then WWE cut ties with him. Yeah, granted, that side of Chris Hero probably isn't the the side that people want to remember him for. But he was very, very good and very good oh, yeah. going into WWE. Um, you know, just for WWE. And some of his stuff there was uh, really... Lauded. That's the reason why he got the WWE in the first place, because he built his reputation for himself. So um, he was good as well. Adam Pierce, who's I, I believe is still doing the rounds. He was, you know, uh, uh, he's still knocking around from 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 time to time. He he was pretty decent as well. Did you catch any Adam Pierce matches? A little bit harder to find. Can't say I have no. No, no he, he, I thought he was all right. Thought he was okay. Uh, obviously, Cole Cabana. I think that WWE was stupid not to give this guy a shot. I, I know he's not ever going to be a main star for them, but I think, especially with how spoken he is just from his own podcast, the application for a guy like Cole Cabana, I think, is is endless. I think you can do so much with the guy because he's got natural charisma, right? Yeah, so easily. I think Cole Cabana um, is, is slightly underrated. And a guy I think I think is really underrated, who's around now, and uh, I think he just lost the Ring of Honor Championship, is Jay Lethal. I think Jay Lethal doesn't get the props for how good of a pro wrestler he actually is. And most people remember him from his TNA days doing the Black Machismo stuff, when actually his wrestling uh, knowledge and his ability and his psychology are far more than what people remember him for, which is just the black material. I'm not saying, you know, indie indie wrestling fans will know him as Jay Lethal, right? But other people remember him as, you know, the black guy who tried to rip off Randy Savage, which of course is not exact, not at all what he was, what, what he was, right? He was his own beast. But he was one of these guys that was so naturally charismatic and he's so good in the ring. So, 
yeah, some of you may say he's not underrated, but what I'm saying underrated to you ask a casual fan about him about wanting to know about Jay Lethal. That may be the only thing that sticks out to them. So that to me is underrated that people don't know how good he is, right? And how how much he he's improved, Matt. He's he's improved. He's been in in wrestling for a long time, but he's got better over the years, steadily better as time has gone on. To now, he's a very well-rounded wrestler. I mean, have you caught any recently uh, Jay Lethal matches? Yeah, I caught, I've I've caught some. I've not say I've seen the entire match, but I've seen I've definitely seen um, sort of snippets of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, his work for Ring of Honor at the moment is is pretty good. I've caught yes. a few matches here and there. I didn't catch the match where he lost the belt, um, but he's been doing great. And big fan of the guy. Is there any others there that you that, that that jump out to you? I think that was a pretty decent enough list of the people. Yeah, that... I think it's quite concise. I didn't want to... Uh, like the worst part is it's like underrated. It's like, oh, I only know ones I like. <laughs> because in, in, in indies, people rate di- people differently. That's just the nature of, of indies, right? So it's hard. To, it's a hard question. But... Yeah, I mean, especially sort of like underrated. It's like, what? That aren't being sort of used properly at a on a current card or, or like a television i've, television I've never had yeah yeah been picked up yeah it's, it's it's a tough one but i'm I'm happy with that list um and i got if, if there's one person i say go out and look, watch some of this sort of stuff if you can find you know a brian danielson nigel mcginnis match go have fun with it oh yeah you'll it's, find gold it's good stuff it's good stuff that they did uh Ziokic asks a few questions Firstly, if we ever think Wade Barrett will get a world title push, and how would we book him in order to turn him into a main eventer? Uh, here's some bad news for Wade Barrett. No, he's never going to be a main eventer. Um, he, I think his chance to become a main eventer broke the same time his arm got wrecked by Big Show throwing someone onto his arm, and then it snapped. Remember? Yeah. Um, that's how he got injured. And... I think that the plan was at that time, because he was on the SmackDown brand, to make him win the Money in the Bank and eventually win the World Heavyweight title. I'm pretty sure that's where they were going with with the plan. But obviously he got injured. They had to go with someone else. I don't. I think that was actually Daniel Bryan they ended up going with. I'm not too sure. I can't remember if I've got the years wrong or anything like that. I'm not too sure. But now, Matt, I, I don't know if you agree with this, now he's mid-card, and the longer you've been mid-card, the harder it is to get out to of break out of it, yeah. Especially now. Maybe 20 years ago, people might levy a few names to me and be, well, these guys were mid-card, and then they, they made the step up. Back then, I think it was a lot more accepted. Now, once you've, once you've got the reek of mid-card about you, it's really hard to get. Ask Kofi Kingston, right? I've loved, yeah. I've loved Kofi's recent work, and people, man, we're going to go look back at episode one. I was hugely critical of Kofi Kingston. I still am, to a, to a point, because of... It's not so much him, but the way he's been used, and the way he's been... He was very, very boring for for lots and lots of years in his career. It's only now that he's been allowed to even be heel, right? He was faced for years doing nothing, right? And now he's here, he's having a bit of fun. Um, but he's been mid-card so long, you can't just suddenly decide to make him a main event star he has been educated to the fan base along you know the reason I'm using the similarity Wade Barrett's the same the fan base has been educated to believe he is mid card that's all he is yeah um, and if anything Wade Barrett's been slowly getting lower down the card as time has gone on anyway especially man that that king gimmick has killed the guy right really um, hopefully he can eventually get rid of it but I'm guessing he's teaming up with Seamus now, and Seamus will tell him you just got to kind of pay out the rest of this gimmick, make them realise it was stupid, and then you can get about your work. So that's the way it's going to go. Because it killed Seamus for a while. Do you remember him being King Seamus? Oh, that's Coming awful. out with the thorned That crown. awful crown. God, God. Um, so how would we push him to become a main event star? Matt, do you have any thoughts before I go through mine? Um, how would you make stop stop him from reeking of mid card? I don't think he's so much going on about. I was going to say first thing would be drop this King Barrett bullshit. Yeah, firstly, yeah, definitely. But to be fair, that's not too prominent now, anyway. He just walks out with the crown, but he doesn't even have the cane of the. Yeah. Um. 
I don't know. He's got to be put in a very in a solid story, and one that actually makes sense and not doesn't get, you know, and one that won't be forgotten about in about three weeks' time. Yeah, I think that's what I think that's key. He's not going to become a main event star, in my opinion, as a heel. I think he becomes a main event star by being a face. So I, what I would. I do... think they were stupid in dropping. You know when they were like, "Oh, stop saying bad news because oh. people are popping for it." That, they, they should have turned him face. They should have done it. What I what I would do, right? I would take a leaf out of the William Regal book and not the. Oh, I'm so pompous. I'm British and I like to <laughs> <with you." laughs> And I love to kiss Mister McMahon's bottom. Yeah, that bit, William Regal. Um. I'm talking the William Regal of his background, right? William Regal was a... He used to do street fights on the streets of Blackpool, right? Everyone knows that. You know, he used to make his money so he could go wrestle and all this sort of stuff to be able to get through. He's got a very interesting... To be fair, if there was one man I would love to train with. Yeah, William Regal. Uh, He's great in Breaking Ground, by the way. We should actually talk about Breaking Ground. We do that in NXT, actually. Yeah, Um, we do that instead of NXT because I didn't watch it this week. (laughs) <laughs> I've, got, I've got a few notes about NXT I want to talk about, but we will, we will put it there as well. Um, so what I would do then is I would make him that character. I would turn him face. I'd let him grow his beard out proper. Not like full, but the way he's got it now looks nice. Keep the ball hammer. Keep all that. That's all good. But what I would do, I would make him a street fighter. A striker. Almost yeah. like The Undertaker, you know? Like he's, you know, he's, he's a proper gritty... Brawler. Yeah, right? Uh, he's just, he's these uh, gritty determined um, fighter and he's badass doesn't take shit from anyone right um, so much so basically what I'm saying is that book him the way that ideally Roman Reigns should have been booked right so and what I would do then easy is that you give him the bad you make him bad news Barrett again with this new Street Fighter style gimmick that he's got going on and not Street Fighters in Hajduken but you know what I mean um, but then, once he beats someone, or, or before he gets into the ring, um, he tells them, well, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. I'm going to kick the shit out of you. That sort of thing. You know, like, obviously not in those words. But give him that saying back. People love that. People got behind. And I'm afraid I've got some bad news, you know. Yeah. Let him do that. I think if you were to do that and book him strongly, book him like a badass, give, as you say, Matt, give him a proper story that makes sense and gets him over. Then sure. I mean, hey, they don't, they seem reluctant to give to give the ass kicker moniker to Reigns. Just give it a Barrett. <laughs> give it a Barrett. Yeah, like make him this this gritty street fighter guy who who doesn't so much wrestle, but he fights. You yeah. know, I'm not like people may be going, oh, you want to make him like Finley? No, I don't want him to come out with his English accent and you know, oh, I want to fight. Ha <laughs> ha. You know, like you know, they they accentuate oh, Finley's no, Irishness. No. You know. My name is Finley, and I love to fight. You know, it's like no, that's stupid. But yeah, make him a fighter. Make him, make him, make him. Dare I say, it, legit. Like he looked like he could beat the shit out of you if you if he wasn't in the ring with you. Like going into the ring is going to be painful against against Wade Barrett. So that's how I would do Barrett, and I do hope that they do something with him because he is, after all, the closest thing that we have to having an English world champion. Yeah. Because Neville isn't closer. Believe me, he's not. His other question as well is, when do we think Seamus will cash in? Go on, Matt. When do you think Seamus is going to cash in? Never. Well, he's going to have to cash in at some point. Never. Like, what? next money in the bank is going to roll around, and he'll, and as a result, the year will be over, <laughs> and the contracts he currently holds will be worthless. He would just, like, forget. I don't want him champion. <laughs> I think there's a good chance he cashes in and loses, but... I just, a Survivor Series, maybe? I mean, if anything, it's like we really can't come up with anything. Seamus. Yeah, let's make Seamus the new authority champion. Yeah, you could do that, I guess. But that would be. I think that would put. I think everyone would be like, uh. You know, to be fair, the thought of Seamus being champion makes me feel like that. Yeah. yeah. I think that he's not going to cash it in until WrestleMania. There is a chance they do it if they want to. If they get too paranoid and they choose to do it at the pay-per-view Survivor Series coming up. But I don't think... I think if he doesn't do it then, then I don't think he's going to do it before Mania. I think it might even be the night after Mania. It might be Raw after Mania. Yeah. And he might cash in, he might lose, or he cashes in, beats the face that has just won the belt or whatever. You know, typical WrestleMania stuff. And then that's a new storyline going forward and stuff like that. But still. 
Uh, Kane St. Dennis asks, who do we think will be WWE champion first? Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Finn Balor, Neville, or Hideo Itami? So basically, um, like the big group of NXT. The NXT Golden Boys. Yeah, essentially. Um, I'm going to go one further here, Matt. I'm going to rank them in the order that I think there's most likely. Okay. To win the WWE title. Fair Matt, enough. So, so how, how are, we gonna, are you going to list yours, or am I going to... And they're not me, or should we go our number f- our number one, our number two? Uh, well, how how do you want to do it? Uh, let me bring up the question. You get your man. You want to think about this? Think about no. This. I've just, I've already read it. I I I, I very just. You just want to uh, list some names out for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah like for a change, I actually read the questions this time. <laughs> Sometimes you don't have time. I just spring them on you. You know, but. Uh... And it's me to do all my research and everything. But... Da, 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 da. That's why you have to send messages on our Twitter account, at TalkWrestlePod, so da, da, da. Matt can surprise me with them. Exactly. With his mind. Yeah, that's right. I don't know why I'm helping you. My my, my Tony's homies, you know, they're on my side. Right. Is. So, yeah, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Balor, Neville, or Hideo. So, one to five. So, do you want to go from five upwards? Okay. Okay, so who do you think is the least likely? It's Army. Okay. I went with Neville as the least likely. Okay. What's your fourth? Neville. Mine's Atami, funny enough. Okay. What's your third? Zane. No, I went with Owens. Okay. What's your number two? Owens. I went with Zane. And Balor. <laughs> Balor, Balor, number one. <laughs> we both went with Balor for number one. Yeah, I think easily Finn Balor's the most chance of winning the belt. And Sami Zayn's got a good chance as well if he comes back fight, fighting fit and the people get behind him. Sure, but we'll, have we'll to see. I, I'm still on that hope that, um, like, at Royal Rumble, Sami Zayn comes out and take like Owens is still IC champ. Royal Rumble, um, Zayn takes out Owens. Yeah, I want that. I and see. then we have then we have a fucking brilliant. Excuse me. Uh, Owen Zane match at Mania. Yeah, you can have a long program then three months. You know, you can even have the two of them in the Elimination Chamber match if that's how you. Oh no, because they oh, keep forgetting that they they've moved the fucking. Thing. They got rid of that. Uh, um, but yeah, you know they could have a match or they could have a you know whatever they want to do a fast lane this year. Still think that's ridiculous, but still. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's the way I I would do it. I for people asking why did I put Neville last, I just don't think Vince is ever going to put the belt on someone like Neville. And I like Neville. I really think he's going to do great. And in fact, a lot of British fans tend to think that Neville could do it one day. I'm much less optimistic. I don't think at all they're ever going to give him that chance. You know. Yeah. Um. You might say, well, they gave it to someone like Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio was their leading Latino draw, and they've got a lot more money coming in from Latino fans and then say they do British fans, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm under no illusion, you know, that Rey Mysterio appealed to a larger demographic than, let's say, Neville does. Yeah. So that's really what I'm going for with that. Um, oh, I've got a question here from my wife. Are you ready for this, Matt? Oh, okay. My wife says, how do we guys ever get laid? And my response to that is, she should know bitches love the podcasters. That's all I'll say with it. Chloroform. Oh, what? What? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what are your sexual exploits? Chloroform. <laughs> you stand by that now, do you? I still stand by my. St- st- I still stand by the stinky rag. <laughs> the stinky rag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just find like when I next go to your house, just this rag that just stinks of strange liquids. I'm gonna just like tiptoe away from the room, wonder what's going on. So. Um, I I suddenly feel really bad for your girlfriend (laughs) your fiance sorry Um... you know Tony since the podcast has reached big time status I've had to do a lot of travelling recently really? I I haven't had to leave my desk at all that's because no one wants to interview a cripple with delusions of grandeur wow wow that's harsh man that's that's harsh but fair Uh, one thing I've learned however is how to get around some of the big cities and that's why I've started using a brand new service available through the app store it is the app how to hurt people's feelings no no but I have one for that as well introducing Nuba the taxi service that has taken over the world 
Got a driver's license? No, fuck it, do it anyway. Got a car? Stole it? That's fine. With an Uber, you can get to work driving people to their destinations whenever it suits you. Like when you wake up at 1pm in the afternoon. You're damn right. Everyone wants a driving service where you could end up somewhere completely different from where you wanted to go. And that's called an adventure, damn it. That, that doesn't sound safe at all. Work around your schedules, earn some serious cash with Nuba. You'll thank me for telling you about this app when you're stuck in Tijuana with a homeless man who thinks he's Chuck Norris. Drive with Nuba. Let's get on to this then. So the WWE Draft 2002. Now, Matt, you're a little bit shocked that I brought this up. You didn't even know I was bringing this up until... I had not a clue. You had not a clue. And the reason I brought this up is because I was just going through some stuff on the network. And I thought I was thinking, because I was looking at draft, you know, possibilities in the NBA, right? And how the new draft guys are going, like Julia Loka for, you know, Demarcus Russell and, and you know, guys like that. 2002. No, to that, yeah, 2002, yeah. The draft. Or it might be 2003, I don't know. It's, it's the very first draft. So... I was like, oh yeah, d- d- obviously WWE hasn't had a draft in a while, and I wanted to, I wanted to remind myself how they actually did it in terms of the format of the show. So I actually went back and uh, I looked at it, and then I got interested in thinking, what do they actually pick as one to ten for either side? So I watched the entire show, and I wanted to bring up a few notes in comparison to what we have now, because this isn't the Attitude Era by any means. This is not the Attitude Era. This is more the ruthless aggression era that Vince was touting at that time. And yeah. This is when you had, like, Flair owning Raw and you had Vince owning SmackDown. The Attitude Era was done right at that point. Um, but here's a few um, notes that I made in, in regards to this. Matt, the star power that WWE had. That, or, this has even more po- is even more poignant this week because of the Rollins injury and that Cena's gone and, and Orton's injured. Here's the star power. I'm going to rattle off these names, and they're all... They weren't just on the show. They were full-time active. The Undertaker, The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, Kurt Angle, Triple H, Chris Jericho. Then they had rising stars like RVD, Edge, and Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Fucking hell is that not star list right there. I'm probably even missing one or two, right? Let's be honest. So, oh yeah, by the way, and then they had women like Trish Stratus and Lita tearing up the women's division, showing everyone that that could be awesome as well. So, and then you had Jazz, who was the champion. She was looking like a badass, all that sort of stuff. So, just the, in fact, with the star power, they had two hours, because the show was two hours back then, which was a hell of a lot more digestible. Two hours to fit in all of these stars, right? And it was almost like they didn't even have enough time to fit all these people in, right? It was like the show was bursting open with all these large and live characters. That two hours was, it just didn't seem like enough. You know, that WWE kept you wanting more, right? And it's cool because you've got Vince and Flair, they're trading verbal blows and they're, they're tra- you know, they're doing their picks against each other, you know. So you've got like Kurt Angle saying saying to Vince, pick me, pick me as your as, as your guy because Ric Flair will never pick the NWO. He doesn't want that poison. That's your poison. He doesn't want that on his show. And of course, Ric Flair picks NWO after, after that. So it's, uh, Vince just goes ballistic and that's all entertaining. And then also you've got an awesome rock promo when he comes out as the first round pick. Where he gets the crowd, he divides the crowd in half. This didn't take very long for him to do this, by the way. But he divides the crowd in half, gets one side to say, you are, and the other side, an asshole. This is to Vince. And for the rest of the night, without fucking flaws, because the fans were so into this show, they were doing it whenever Vince came out. You are, the whole crowd, you are an asshole. You are an asshole. And it, I just remi- it was almost like fans used to be like this, like the whole the whole building was full of chants, full of full of signs, full of optimism, full of excitement. And then now you go to some. I, can't, I kind of feel like you're putting much more, getting much more use out of your network subscription than I am at the moment. <laughs> uh, well, like all I've been watching is NXT when I can. Like, breaking ground, breaking ground, and table for three. <laughs> well, they are pretty much like the three best things on there at the moment. So, um, it's true. But 
Yeah, I think it was quite funny. Here's the most poignant thing. So, like I said there, it seemed like they had so many stars to fit into two hours. And then now we've got no stars filling up three. That's the biggest difference of what we have now. Yeah. Um, and when I when I rattled off all those names, all those big names in wrestling, and, you know, you've had Seth Rollins who's injured. Yeah, Seth Rollins would probably fit in quite well, you know, there. He wouldn't be one of the big stars, but he would be okay. But then now he's gone. Roman Reigns still isn't fully established. He needs that title win and time as the champion. So now they're left with absolutely no one. And yeah, it just is so different. This is only this is 13 years ago, right? You think so? It means in 13 years they haven't really been able to create lasting long stars Anything, yeah. apart from John Cena, which is just it's so poignant and it, and it's so indicative of the problems WWE will have going forward um, just just in general because oh, come on look at let me rattle off those names again Undertaker The Rock Austin Hogan Nash Hawk Angle Triple H Chris Jericho Brock Lesnar RVD literally I could go on go, I could go on that the Dudley Boys Jeff Hardy you know they had uh, Matt Hardy the Hardy Boys there at that time you know that, I'll, I'll leave it at that because I think that's that, that's that I think it speaks. Yeah, for it's um, it's crazy. Go back watch the draft. I'm sure you have fun with it because if you don't remember what the exact draft picks were, it's actually quite funny to see their reactions. Vince and Flair, their reactions between each other, you know, in their respective war rooms and stuff like that. So good stuff. Let's talk a little bit about NXT this week. I know you haven't called it this week, Matt, but we'll also talk a little bit. Do you want to talk about breaking ground now? Uh, yeah, we can have a quick brain ground chat. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a, a good thing to do. So, breaking ground. If you haven't caught it, it's obviously on the network. It's a uh, behind the scenes look at WWE's developmental program, and that includes NXT. Um, they have um, a lot of time to look on the likes of Baron Corbin, Apollo Cruz, and even Devin Taylor. And you may remember Devin Taylor as being the woman who does all the interviews remember she asks everyone how they feel and that's pretty much her only question like yeah if she's been able to do that for the entire time and the one that um dana brooke was happy patting on the head which she won't be longer be able to do <laughs> because they showed on this show i mean we knew she was released so it was just a matter of time i was just shocked that they were actually going to show it was her getting fired and um that's true oh uh, yeah i mean that was i mean I'm not going to lie and say it wasn't interesting. It was a little bit obviously uncomfortable because you feel for the woman. Because she was trying to become a wrestler. It's just that all the injuries had obviously got to her over that point in time. And come on, the NXT women, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're breaking new ground. They can't have someone like <coughs> Eva Marie yeah. who isn't up to scratch, right? So, uh, going on my By the way, she was back this week, Matt. Yeah, I saw... Um... Makes, showed... almost, almost makes me kind of glad I missed NXT this week. Yeah, I'm going to talk about her a little bit this week. A little bit, but we'll obviously talk about Breaking Ground. Matt, I love Breaking Ground. I think it's brilliant. I, I like... think it's really good. I think William Shatner's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I was actually genuinely shocked because I was listening to it for like the first like half an hour. I was like, I know that voice. I know that voice. Where the fuck is that voice from? And then suddenly it hit me. Just bang, it's William Shatner. I was like, yeah, Jesus Christ. Um... Yeah, I think I think fans of this show would get a kick out of um, kick out of breaking ground, and it does oh, yeah. take a lot of look at it, and it takes a lot of look on the likes of some people that haven't been highlighted before as being a real big, um, big pioneer for the women on NXT, which is you know Sarah Amato, Sarah Del Rey, who it shows a lot of her teaching these women how best to do their stuff, um, and even talking to one of the developmental people about them being booted off one of the the shows you know being taken off the card so if you want to see more about how these guys are genuinely and it shows you the workout regime and if you want to see how the tough enough guys got along then this is the perfect place for you because they had a lot of zz this week and oh, yeah. signing him doing his workout which it's is a joke <laughs> it, it is comical to say the least and you've got tanner apparently who's freaking out kind of in the fact that you know he wasn't signed himself and got easy he was signed despite all of the the problems that surround him but but still yeah um 
Yeah, I, I, I don't know how much longer they're, they're, they're going to do the breaking ground for. Do you, have you ever heard any news of, of when they're planning on doing it? Or how long they're going to do it for? Or they I don't just... know. I mean, obviously they can't keep doing it on like a weekly basis. Or they can do it like seasons. Um, I guess so. I imagine that's how they would do it. Like, at least that's what I think. <laughs> I don't know. They, they, it's, well, it's obviously, it's not really something that they've um, just said. It's coming. It's here. And now what? Eh. I'm, either way, I'm happy with it. I think oh yeah, I'm happy. really enjoying it. This is the sort of stuff that WWE should have been doing on the network right from the beginning. They should have been like the WWE 24 stuff is brilliant because it shows you, uh, you know, parts of the wrestling world that you wouldn't usually see the backstage at these oh, yeah, yeah. moments you know they showed on the wrestlemania 24 the likes of undertaker getting ready to go out for his match the match that that his streak was broken on and all this sort of stuff so it's really interesting stuff so a lot of good things like that uh so let's talk a little bit about nxt this week matt you are going to catch it i will have to spoil for you you probably know this is happening we are going to get Bala and joe at london it looks like that's a, a sketch yep. Looks like we're going to have Alexa Bliss and Bailey in London as well, which I'm fine with. And Asuka versus Emma, that certainly seems like it's building up to be a NXT match at London as well, which I'm totally fine with that as well. I'm going to be quite happy to see Yeah, that. I'm good with that. Um, but Eva Marie came back this week. She's back from, from, from Paris. All red, everything, from even though she wears blue. Gay uh, Perry. Yeah, so... Here's the thing about Eva Marie. She's back, but she's doing all the same stuff she was before, which was being outperformed by the jobbing talent she's been given to beat. Her moves not lacking any uh, lacking any impact, and she just no sells half the shit she takes. It's quite frustrating in this match. Like she's taking drop kicks or kicks, and she's getting back, and her face is like in a still image as she gets up. It's like you just haven't quite got it, right? You just still haven't got it after all this time. Um. And I don't want to spend long talking about Eva Marie. Like she was out for six. She was gone for a couple of weeks. Like that's a couple of weeks that she could have like gone to the grind or something. But no, she's going to go to Paris or whatever the fuck. Like was that she genuinely go to Paris? Like was it as a story uh, thing? It was a Total like... Divas. Total Divas sent his thing with Total Divas going to Paris. Was they, it? They did loads of filming. That's why she was gone because Total Divas to her career is more important to her than it is. Oh, of course, of course. Everything that's not wrestling. Yeah, like I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to blame her for going to Paris because, of course, Total Divas. Well, you can't blame her. It's WWE's I'll decision. Blame, I don't give a fuck. I'll blame her for everything. Yeah, <laughs> you don't even care this week. You can just fuck no, it. Yeah. <laughs> no, just even Marie can fuck off. If if I were her and I was really determined, and then she has tried, right? And you can see that the moves that she's doing is just. The moves have never been a problem. Well, it has been a problem. Yeah. <laughs> I Mate, I, I, I'm not even going to talk about Eve Marie because we've got... I was going to say, before. straight face here, Tony. Yeah, let's just stop. I'm going to stop. I want to enjoy episode 100 of this show, so... And not going on an Eva run. No, no, I'd rather not. Matt, if there's one thing you're going to watch this week on NXT, it's the Gable and Jordan promo when they call out the Ascension. I will leave it at that. Because it is amazing as any, as everything that these guys do. I was laughing my ass off. These guys are brilliant. So, if you've got five minutes, Matt, go find the Gable and Jordan promo from this week. How NXT. was the um, Cruz Bala match? That was right. That was good. It was okay. Because it. Things about these matches is that you you expect some good wrestling, but of course, because it's not on a. Um, on a special, you don't see the title changing, so there's only so much you can get into it. I thought it was good. Yeah. Um, well, I will spoil it for you, Matt, because obviously I've already told you. Joe. Joe comes, comes and gets angry. Don't I do? I think. Like... Well, they they they, they, they did I'm something interesting because Corbin comes in and attack. He's the one who actually stops the match first. So he comes okay. in and he beats up um, Apollo Cruz because obviously Cruz eliminated him for the chance for the belt. Yeah. Um, so as he's beating up Bala, Joe comes in for the save and then he looks all like he's conflicted, like he doesn't know what to do. And of course, you know where it's going from. Then he starts beating the shit out of um, Bala. He tells Bala, um, remember I was the one who did this to you or something like this. Then he muscle, muscle, muscle busters him and then walks out. So Fair. Yeah, you're obviously going to get Bala and Joe, which I'm happy with Bala and Joe being um, the main event at London because that could be a... Uh, that could be a humdinger right there. That could be. Um, they're going to have to do some doing to beat their, their female counterparts anyway. That's, that's what they're going to do. Oh, yeah, that's so. true. 
Uh, so, Matt, we go then and talk about Let's Talk Wrestling episode one. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. I went back and listened to episode one, which is obviously on this channel. You can go back and watch it now if you guys want to, of the Let's Talk Wrestling podcast. Matt, do you remember anything from episode one? Anything? No, all? but you need to bear in mind that that was the better part that was nearly two years ago. It, it was damn near two years ago, yeah. It was, um, well, obviously I didn't. That's why I went back and, and um, had a listen. And had a listen. I still have my alcohol there. So nice. <laughs> um, Swig of beer for the working man. This, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, so I went back and listened to it, and of course, you know, because it was our first. You know, we had done podcasts before, but this was the first one where it was on our channel. We had our format set out. So I remember saying to you before we did that first episode, and it's kind of the way that we do things now, where I said, I'm going to go a million miles an hour. I'm going to go through all this wrestling stuff, all my notes, and then you stop me when you want to elaborate on a point. And that's right. kind of how we've yeah, done things, yeah. right? But obviously in that first one, because of being nervous, and Matt knows when I get nervous, I tend to... Ramble. Well, yeah, I, even then my, my talking speed goes through the roof, right? Yeah. Um... So obviously in our first episode, I'm like very much like bah, 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 very quick, you know. Um, go back, so go back, go back and watch that. That isn't the funny thing. There's actually two segments from that Raw where when I was listening to us review them, I actually laughed my ass off remembering about them. One of them is the Michael Strahan segment. Do you remember that? No. You don't. Well, Michael Strahan was, I think he's a, a retired now uh, American football player. And he had a segment with, like, The Miz in the ring, where, like, I think people came out, and, uh, yeah, Titus O'Neil and uh, Darren Young, I think, or whatever, they were heels at the time, so they come out and they try and get in Strahan's face, he keeps trying to hip-toss them, and then he finally does, then he hip-tosses The Miz, but then The Miz gets up and then celebrates with Strahan for hip-tossing him, and we rebranded it as one of the most awkward segments we had ever watched. So listening to us review that was actually quite hilarious. Do you not remember it at all, the Michael Strahan segment? Okay. Is it is it coming back to you small bits now? To YouTube. You go to YouTube to watch it, yeah. Um, so yeah, we reviewed that and called that like it was just weird, just really really weird. The other... Matt, if you don't remember the Michael Strahan segment, you've got to remember the kosher butcher. <laughs> <laughs> How can I forget the kosher butcher? You've got to remember the kosher butcher. The kosher butcher was brilliant. So what they do on this show. November twenty five, November twenty fifth, twenty thirteen. Mm, sounds about right. Oh my god, it's him and Gold Dust. I'm gonna have a look at this. What in the ring? Oh yeah, there's a bit with him and Gold. Apparently, the Gold Dust bit we liked. So, but let me explain the kosher butcher stuff while you're watching that. So basically, they cut to a guy who's in the crowd. I've got no reason why he's famous or if he's got anything involved in WWE. I sh- we certainly haven't seen him since. And you've got Jerry Lawler walks up to this man. And he's like interviewing him. He's saying, well, what would be your wrestling name? If you were a wrestler, what would be your name? You know, like The Undertaker, Kane, The Big Show. What would be your wrestling name? And he comes out with, I would be The Kosher Butcher, which is wrestling. I'm sure someone could pull off that name. It's a bit goofy, Matt, but someone could pull it off. But that's not the funny bit. When Jerry Lawler goes one step further... And uh, says, Cameron's on my screen. Oh, dear. Skip, 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 skip. Where's Goldust? Oh, that's oh one, God, it's Eva Marie. That's one thing you should have watched NXT for. Cameron wrestled Asuka. You what? Oh, oh yeah. Goldust is on screen. Yeah. So, the kosher butcher, they ask him <laughs> what, what would be his finishing move. You know. Uh, yeah, I, like, oh, yeah, you, yeah, you know what I'm going with that. I can't remember his line now. Oh, I've got it. Terrible. I've, and he comes back and says, my finishing move, and I think he even does the cutthroat thing with his finger, I'm not sure, but he says, my finishing move would be the circumcision. That was it. And Jerry Lawler, at that point, you know, any plan that he had to get out of that conversation had just hit the fucking wall. He had no clue. What to say and what to do. He was just like, 
what the fuck? <laughs> like, what the hell has happened? Um, there's me obviously laughing like crazy. On the episode, you and me were laughing. I said, I think I said to you on that episode, Matt, I said, would you like to be on the receiving end of the circumcision? And you said, I, I don't think I would like to be. I think, no. I'll, I think I'll steer clear of, of the circumcision. Oh, no, I, I, I found the hip toss. You found the hip toss. Oh, yeah, it was, it was all very awkward. That was unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, they were the two things that I picked out. Guys, go back and listen to episode one. It's just funny just because of how we were nervous. Well, a little bit nervous, but we were just getting into our groove. We were just kind of figure out what this show was meant to be. Now, 99 episodes later, we're on episode 100, and yeah, that's kind of crazy, right? So that's it. It's on the flow. Exactly. I've been getting into this new game recently, mate. It's been great. Really? I mean, what is it? I mean, there's Metal Gear 5, Witcher 3. I mean, the new Assassin's Creed's out. It's like, there's been some great games this year. <laughs> nah, 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 Matt. They're, they're all shit, okay? I've been playing this game that has taken over America. The game that has placed players' wallets on the edge of their seat. A game so enthralling that my bank account trembles in fear whenever I play it. God, you're not talking about... Game of Boar! Why have a revolutionary video gaming experience when I can be constantly tempted to spend more money? All the celebrities are endorsing it. That model with the massive baps was in the commercials. That means it has to be good. It, it doesn't. It means it can be shameless and exploitive. Millions of players can't be wrong, Matt. I, yeah, they can. I mean, of course they can. You just haven't experienced the thrill of Game of Boar, now complete with even more transactions. Why worry about actually playing the game when you can throw money at your phone to do it all for you? Now that's capitalism. And that's why you can't have nice things, because you can't afford them. Game of Boar on the App Store. Get it now. Matt, we have talked a lot of stuff before getting to this point. It is now to talk about the Raw Review <sighs> on this show. Here we are. Here we are. My old friend who can't <laughs> talk with you again. Uh, so we're on the way to Survivor Series now, the 25th anniversary remembrance of The Undertaker, whatever they're doing with it now. Yeah. And last week we did The Unthinkable and praised them for how they booked Raw. Now everyone was obviously quite shocked. I'm sure a few, few people... Um, were touching wood, thinking, oh, is it a dream? Has this actually happened? It did happen. But I was a little bit less optimistic to see where WWE would be able to uh, keep this up. I'm sure that it, whatever plans they had to do so, obviously now they've had a spanner thrown them with Rollins getting... Yeah. Um, but obviously the problem is with this is that WWE may be looking at, oh, okay, so the quality of the show is going up, our ratings are still going down. And they're still having a... I think this week they had a very big drop from their first hour to their second hour. Whereas normally it's their second hour to their third hour that they get the big drop. They lost 200,000 in that first hour. So... It's massive. You know, yeah. I mean, just after that first hour. The first hour they had yeah. the most, of course. So that is, that is worrying for WWE. That they didn't give enough of a hook for fans. Or didn't give enough in that first hour. And in fact, in this show, I think the last hour was the one that was the better. So we're going we're gonna to talk about that. So resident number one contender, or not anymore anyway, Roman Reigns kicks off the show. He tells us that he doesn't like kiss asses or weasels, so he doesn't like Seth Rollins. And it's not a force on earth that can stop him from becoming the new world champion. Rollins was like, I'm not going to let you become world champion. I know you're going to beat me, so I'm going to injure myself, damn it. That's what he did. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to fight Reigns. Yeah, that's it. It was all, it was all a scheme from Rollins. That's what it was. He is the architect, after he, all. He is the architect. Yeah, quite right there, Matt. You're quite right. He is the architect. Uh, that was the entire of his promo. I didn't like it. I like it when Reigns is pushing people and he's blunt and he's aggressive. This is him here going, oh, I don't like this. Oh, uh, yeah, and this is... Oh, do you, you mean you don't prefer when it's a snivelling pile of suffering succotash? No, no. no. Oh. Technically, he's never got as bad as that, but you are right. It's sort of in the ilk. You know, it's it's on the wrong track. I liked it. When you had Reigns just before that Wyatt match, and he was pushing Wyatt, he was prodding him, pissing him off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. when they were sat face to face. Yeah, that was the that was the the Reigns that I enjoy, right? But still, asshole Reigns, as I like to call him. Um, Rollins comes on out for the last draw. He'll be on as a competitor for a little while, and he scoffs at the idea of Reigns beating him, but he admits that he's good. He wouldn't have recruited him into the Shield after all, and then he. Um, 
rattles off the you know pontificates to Reigns about the past, which we know Rollins. That's the one thing he's going to miss over his six to nine months out is pontificating about things. Yeah. So the first thing he'll do when he comes back is that he'll pontificate about how he was injured and how he's been injured for six months. Because he, he, the guy loves he loves storytelling, he likes telling the past. Oh yeah, know. he's got to so go on about it. He just loves it. He loves it. Um. So. Rollins then says fans will only remember Reigns as the man who carried Rollins' bags. And they tease a fight, but the authority remembers that it's the opening segment and Matt, they're hella late. They were like it's eight like, minutes late what? for the opening what? segment. Um... Yeah, all I can imagine is just Stephanie and Tripp just running fucking full speed towards the... <laughs> oh shit, it's the opening segment! Just running out there, because of course they have to be on it. Um... Well... Yeah. yeah, I can only on. imagine there's, there, there was a few people this week like that, like Big E when he forgot his title. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. Um, so, I've lost my place in my notes here. That doesn't happen often. It's the 100th episode of getting the pair of me. It's to be, it's to be honest, the alcohol. To be honest, that's all doing it. My eyes are getting a little bit blurry. And that, you know what? There's one way to fix that, Matt. There's one way to fix that. Drink more. Exactly. Hmm. That's some good shit right there. That's nice. I can feel that. I can feel that all the way going all the way down. That's good. That's good. <laughs> um, so Stephanie does a paint by numbers build up of the match, and then still says that the the match won't happen tonight. You know, this like, oh, it's going to be an amazing match. It's going to be for the world title, but it's not going to be here tonight, sort of thing. Like yeah, but why would we let people hear this? What see it? Ugh. This low inserts generic. You know, in such local town name, yeah, that's it. Is undeserving of such a match. It gets heat, but of course and it I gets heat. Get it. It's classic. It's, it's classic, but it's a little bit like, ah, oh, come on, you, come on, mate. Right? You've got an army of I'd like to, Yeah, I was gonna say, I'd like to think you're capable of better than that. Yeah. <laughs> Triple H says, of course, there that the Denver is not a place that uh, deserves that match, but he thinks it is the place that deserves a Survivor Series match early. So. He makes a Survivor Series match with teams chosen by Rollins and Reigns. I wouldn't have booked it as a Survivor Series match. I think it takes the sheen off having a well, Survivor Series match. But I, th- I think it was a good idea, seeing as we're not getting a Survivor Series match now. Uh, well, no, you, I think you still are. I think you're getting the Wyatts and Undertaker and Kane. I think that's going to be a Survivor oh, yeah. Series match. So. But, yeah, uh, it, I think it takes the sheen off the actual Survivor Series match of the pay-per-view. But it is, it is what it is. They, I guess they felt that they had to do it, but... Yeah. I would I would have gone on with a different idea. I would have done Pick Your Poison, where Rollins can choose Reigns' opponent, Reigns can choose Rollins, and that's a tune-up match. You can do that easily. You've got two matches at the end of the show that should be high quality. True. That's what I would have done. Ziggler versus Owens is the first match of the night. Two men fighting for no reason, apart from the fact that they wrestled each other last week, which apparently is obviously, of course, more than enough reason for them to do it again. And I have to be honest, Matt, I had tuned out of the match. Yeah. That was until I heard that uh, Prince Pretty had showed up. It's Tyler! Ah! And unfortunately... Then it, it cut across straight to commercial break. <laughs> yeah, uh, but the thing is, yeah, but still, like, even then, I'm like, I'm still not invested. <laughs> they should have done it straight after, you know, the bit of his music where it's like, there's Tyler! And then it just cuts to commercial <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Just and there's Tyler wanted. Breeze. We'll see you when we get back. Yeah. So, here's the thing. The main roster so far have not been educated as to who the fucking royal hell Tyler Breeze is. To them, Matt, he's just a guy who just likes taking selfies at ringside in, during in fluffy, matches. Yeah, in fluffy gear. In fluffy gear, right? And Summer some Ray likes him for some reason, right? Yeah. So, I thought, why the hell has WWE... Not shown at least a vignette on the guy. Showed some yeah, of... don't they? Like they even mention on Raw, like yeah, JBL, just like he recently had, a, like had a match against um, Jushin Thunder Liger. Cool. Show some of it. Yeah, show the match. Show how awesome he was in that match. You know, you can hide the fact he lost it, sure, but to just give a vignette on the guy, show his awesome entrances that he's had, the sort of character he is. Um, maybe even show an NXT, you know, clippets of an NXT match that he did win and, and stole the show. Oh, hell, go sort of show the um, the Fatal 4-Way match they had at one of the takeovers. Yeah, you know, 
Um, there's so much stuff that you could show on Breeze to show people that he's this, yeah, he's this sort of character, but he is a badass wrestler in the same merit. It's fine for you and me, Matt, because we love Breeze, but the general fans do not know who Tyler Breeze is. They don't yeah. know. So, when you've got, um, you got, so you've got Breeze on the outside taking selfies. Ziggler... In his is, VIP section, yeah. Well, he goes out of the ring to take his selfies. Ziggler is an idiot because he gets distracted by it, even though Breeze wasn't really doing anything. And then... Gets power bombed. Owens gets the win. Walks off. Yeah. After the match, Breeze takes a selfie with Ziggler. He then gets smacked in the face, and then Breeze gives him the beauty shot. And the crowd are dead because they don't know who the fuck Tyler Breeze is. It's infuriating that WWE hasn't shown anything on Tyler Breeze on two weeks of being on Raw. It's error vignette something that... I think we're going to get one soon because I think we're definitely destined to having um, it's obviously Breeze and Ziggler at Survivor Series but it's still just like it doesn't answer for a great deal I would have made three vignettes Matt and I would have aired them one, two, three weeks before he arrived on Raw yeah that's the way I would have done it I mean hell if anything that sort of justifies how Summer Rae ran, o- ran off to him yeah it's like well this like, guy's coming like, and he seems I the fa- best thing yeah, I, like, I found a new guy it's just like and out of nowhere so Tyler Breeze made his debut because he's a friend of Summer Rae's essentially that's not really a good way in yeah that's the way he's been de- he's been dealt with now isn't it I found someone yeah. new I just listen even if it's not perfect just show something to the main crowd he's just some random dude taking selfies that's all Tyler Breeze is I, I'm, I was so annoyed I really and you've got like I thought it was quite funny as well you've got Byron Saxton who is as biased to the faces as JBL is to the heels and he says that Ziggler couldn't defend himself when Ziggler was the guy who threw the first punch like yeah. he started the fight with Tyler Breeze here that was the, the, the booking the way it went so I I, I actually frustrates me for Tyler because we know how good he is and he's a good character and he's so ap- applicable. You can use him so many different ways, but they just haven't, they haven't even given a chance to try and educate the fans of who he is. No. Just one, uh, just one vignette. That's all. It's all I want. <laughs> ah, it, it's annoying. It's like you can make it as artsy fartsy as you want, like sort of the typical, like, who am I sort of thing. And it's like, but then, and then it would work. Even then, you can make it so vain. Mm. But that's Tyler Breeze. Yeah. You don't even have to... Like, as long as you don't go, who is Tyler Breeze? Yeah. Like, it, you could make something so easily. It's just like... I'm not, listen, when a guy used to come in, he used to get... He used to get months of vignettes i'm talking about remember carlito when he came in he had about down near two months of different vignettes when 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 alberto del rio made his debut he had like two months of different style vignettes before he came in so when people came in they already knew what sort of character they knew who carlito was they knew who alberto del rio was no one knows on the main roster who the fuck tyler breeze is no one knows so no one cares yeah so when he did that move on him and then he posed. No one gave a shit because they're like, what the fuck is going on? Why should I care? Who are you? I think it. I think yeah. it's so stupid that they just they threw him out there. And yeah, like I said, me and Matt, people like me and Matt are always going to gonna cheer for someone like that. But guess what? We are the minority. Wrestling fans that listen to podcasts and that listen to, you know, you know, listen to fan podcasts, look at all the dirt sheets for news, who look at more wrestling not just what happens on raw but what happens on Lucha underground what happens in tna all this other stuff we are the minority general wrestling fans are the wwe primary demographic they're the millions that they strive to get yeah they're the ones that watch raw and do not care what happens on other shows so it's all well and good us being like the one third or one quarter of fans knowing who tyler breeze is you need to educate the majority, not the minority of your fans, who he is, and they ha- and they, they haven't even tried. I, I don't, I don't know why they haven't done it. It's actually quite. Like, I'd, I'd like to think that at some point, like Triple H has gone to him, sort of like, "Oh, how's it going now? You're back on the main, main roster." And all Tyler Breeze has to say is just like, "I don't think they know who I am." It's like mm. we can fix that. Just one vignette. I mean, now it's yeah. a little bit too late. Now it's late, and late is better than ever, right? But. Ideally, you would have done it for a few weeks leading up to his debut, but they just threw it, they threw it on SmackDown of all players. 
That's another thing that annoys me this week. Oh, I'm getting annoyed about a lot more stuff this week than I thought I did. <laughs> let's not talk. Let's stop talking about Eva Marie in case yeah. we get angry. The fuck are they doing? Yeah, <laughs> let's talk about Tyler. Let's stop talking about Tyler Breeze before I get even more angry. So, Rollins is talking to Owens backstage. He uh, he brings up a potential champion versus champion match at WrestleMania. This is all to try and get Owens on his team for the main event. There is, of course, exactly zero chance of... Of course, now there's even less chance than zero of Owens and Rollins having a match at WrestleMania at the WrestleMania 32 in Texas. So, if you were excited about that and thought it was going to happen, well, I didn't need to tell you. you well, you're going to have to wait for 30... You're going to have to wait for WrestleMania 33. Yeah, 33 is your, is your closest chance. Uh, Becky Lynch is, Lynch is talking... Lynch? She's a Lich. She's a dead poet. She dresses like fucking Jack Swagger. So, uh, not Jack Swagger. Jack Sparrow, sorry. There we go. It's, it's, it's the alcohol, Matt. It's the alcohol. I've had, I've had a little bit by now, so there is that. Um, <laughs> she's looking like an undead pirate, Becky, Lynch, Becky Lich, as we'll call her now. She's talking to Renee Young. She calls Paige a B, and then can't wait to get her hands on on Paige. Bree shows up and says that she'll be winning the Fatal Four Way and will be the number one contender for the title. Not with those kicks, you won't. Becky calls Brie... I still hate those kicks, by the way. They're funny. Oh, I do too. Becky, uh, Becky calls Brie what, exactly what her character is. And I fully agree with Becky here. A pathetic pathetic walking mat of a sister. Matt, I stand by what I've said before. Brie Bella is one of the worst characters in WWE history. Oh, agreed. For the impact of women across the world, her character is one that was basically told by her sister, do the fuck what I tell you to do. Don't be ambitious. Don't think by yourself. Go and lose. Go pad your bra so you can pretend to be like me. And look, and and and, and then after all that, because they did a little storyline of of Brie not liking it, you know, because she was still a face at that point. And then literally over the course of, you know, so she did that for a month. An e- over the course of like an evening. Yeah. Then she decided, you know what? I really like obeying. I really like being told what to do. I really like being someone's lackey. So she is one of the worst characters that WWE has ever done because at the moment her character is of that of a slave. So, and she likes it. She smiles. She loves it. She loves it. Sure. Yeah. And those kicks. Those kicks. They're not your kicks. They're the world's kicks, Matt. And the world wants them back. That's it. That's what I have to say. Cesaro versus the Miz. Cesaro looked like he was on the slosh for his entrance. He, he looked like he was like me. He was like drunk and shit. He was off balance and everything. He looked like he'd been uh, taking a few... He was celebrating for us, Matt. He was taking a few brewskis for L- LW100. That's what he was doing. And, well, to be honest, I wouldn't blame him hitting the drink with how he's booked some weeks. So there is that. Like this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like this week, yeah. Um, is it bad, Matt, that whenever Miz wrestles, I'm genuinely happy? And I'm honest here. I'm actually genuinely happy, Matt, when Miz wrestles. But do you want to know why? Because you get to see him lose. No. No, that isn't it. But that is, that is a good pick. It's because we're at very least somewhat guaranteed that we won't get a Miz TV segment. That's why I'm happy to see him wrestle. Ah. Mm. Stardust and the Ascension were in the crowd. Uh, apparently, according to commentary, there's a rivalry going on between Cesaro and them. If it had started, somehow I don't know where the fuck it started. So sure, okay, all right. It's the one thing I couldn't understand. I couldn't believe with this one is the fact that um, like JBL couldn't say telescope. Yeah, he seemed to be struggling with that a little bit. Yeah, it's just like he's using a periscope. It's like. Really? No, I mean, a telescope. It's, like, it's the same thing in Bermuda. It's like, shut up, JBL. Yeah. Uh, but JBL lo- does like digging himself into verbal holes every so often, doesn't he? And That's he can't, it. Can't re- he doesn't Where's so much time verbal diarrhea? Out. That's what he suffers from. Yeah, to be honest, yeah. Um, at least he's not, well, I wouldn't say he's not as bad as Booker T, but um, Booker T just comes out of more wackier stuff. Isn't it? It I would, I, look, I would much rather have a shucky ducky quack quack than any more of JBL's bullshit. And his wireless tables. I'm not going to let that go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and girls hate each other because okay. they're girls. <laughs> because they're women, yeah. Oh, God. Um, so Cesaro swings the Miz here so much that I'm sure that Miz was in some sort of time paradox and he was seeing Stone Cold again from last week. I'm sure that was what that was happening. <laughs> Like, just spun so many times, he thought he was still champion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he was back fighting in Cena at WrestleMania like, and the Rock. Where's, where's Ryan? Ryan! Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Cesaro then submits Miz with the sharpshooter, then looks angrily towards the bondage crew. I mean, Stardust and the Attack. To be honest, they do look like the bondage crew. They look like, you know, what you would go to in a very angry bondage session. Not that I would know, of course. I'm going to take that as an assumption. I imagine that he would... The star, that's kind of Stardust's scene, shall we say. Uh, <laughs> but still. WWE places their tongue on all of our collective assholes when, he's, when they say thank you fans for putting up with their bullshit. Don't worry, WWE. We'll be around for a while. We're like a married partner overlooking the years of obvious flaws. We really love you, really. We do. We do. We, do. we love you very much. We but, just some ha- but sometimes we forget why. Sometimes we forget why. <coughs> sometimes we kind of wish that we weren't married to you. But that's just part <laughs> of marriage. Okay? But we'll always be here. We'll always be here. Um, joking, all joking aside, I'm one of those people that doesn't care when WWE does those sort of things. Thank you, the fans. So, yeah, it's a little bit pan- pandering, but I don't care. I honestly don't mind. The thing I is, I love it's like, thank you. Please don't go. Yeah, please don't leave. We love fans. Stay with us. Don't turn off the channel. Yeah, essentially. Don't so. find something else to watch. <laughs> look, look, we'll give you the Wyatt family. Oh, they're scary and spooky. Yeah. Why, why are you watching American Horror Story? Yeah. <laughs> Wyatt family. Yeah, yeah. They're kooky. <laughs> you make them sound like they should be in a fucking Adam's I'd love family. To, I'd love, yeah, I was going to say, I'd love to imagine if just in the board meeting they get referred to as kooky. Yeah. <laughs> Mysterious and spooky. They bring Christina Arici to be um, fucking Wednesday <laughs> Adams. Just out there just like randomly. Sister, like actual sister Abigail. Yeah, he's like, yeah. <laughs> um, so Bray... Grabs the mic. He says he wants to give us a gift, something special. Oh, Bray! He knows. He knows his episode one hundred. Oh, he wants to give us something. He went all out this week. He says that he's carried the bodies of the Undertaker and Kane, but it was just their bodies. He really wants their soul. And he says he's successfully harvested the souls of Taker and Kane, and it's giving him power. He's like an addict. And he then summons Undertaker's Thunder and Lightning with special effects befitting a bad B movie. A very bad B movie. To be fair, that's kind of like Undertaker's Lightning anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, essentially, what he means by taking their souls and their power is that he's gained their pyros, which yeah. is great for his entrances, at the very least. Guys, when this all stuff came out, I was like. So we're in the reality era, Re- are, are we? O- o- okay, we're talking about harvesting souls. I love Wyatt as a dark, evil character. When they carry, remember when they carried people away, they changed, right? You know, you didn't know what happened to them. So when they carried away Daniel Bryan, he came back as Daniel Wyatt. And like, what happened to to Bryan? You know, when they used to. When it wasn't so much supernatural, but it was scary that they could take yeah. you away and you will not be the same person again. But with Wyatt going the supernatural route now, now he's gained magical powers. It's like, it's not conceivable anymore. We live, we live in a different era now, Matt, where a storyline look like this looks out of place and looks just very fucking silly, if I'm honest. Did you get the same sort of feeling that it just looked, it looked goofy? Right. Initially, but I like it. Really, I I didn't like it at all. I like it. I thought the whole harvesting their souls of how I'd like. I think we're a bit beyond that now. Even Undertaker refers to him more of like a man needing to fight for you know, when the man's lost everything, you know, he fights with nothing to lose. Like he's more of a man than a supernatural being, right? Yeah. Um. So. But then they show a, a video package, which was actually pretty cool, of um, Undertaker and Kane. Then it swirls around. Highlights of the years. Yeah. And this is apparently, un- you know, Bray Wyatt eating this. Or, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just thought it looked out of place. I think it looked really silly. That, that, that's just me. You know, like, it's, it's feasible. If they carry Daniel Bryan out and he comes back as something, they could have emotionally fucked up with him. They, they could do that. That's something that could happen in real life. Bray Wyatt taking the souls of the Undertaker and Kane and getting pyro special effects because of them, then I'm like, nah, like, come on. Like, you're you're asking me to buy into this. I'm not buying into it. Oh, I'm not buying into it. That doesn't mean I don't enjoy it. You're a little bit less forgetful. I just like Wyatt for promos. I don't know. I I, I do like a Wyatt promo, but I can't overlook it. I I think if there's one person 
best to just deliver a pure promo, it's it's what. Obviously, with the exception of um, a certain Jew. Yeah. yeah, that's why I wanted a um, a promo off between those two guys. That'll be fun, wouldn't it? But so good. Don't think it's going to happen. It's so good. It would be amazing. That's like a start. That's like an all star show right there. That's what it is. Lucha Underground. Lucha Underground. Lucha Underground was on this show. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say Lucha Dragons. I just, I'm so excited about Lucha Underground next year. That's why. I'm, that's why I'm bringing it up. Lucha Dragons versus Barrett and Sheamus. Lucha Undergrounds get a video package. Tyler Breeze was so jealous before this match, um, which obviously a notion that could have done well for them again before they had debuted. Better late than never, I guess. But a good match here, I thought. Uh, Lucha Dragons looking. I good actually really, I actually quite enjoyed this match. Yeah, I thought Sin Cara of all people looked pretty decent. Yeah. Enough. So Kalisto gets the win with the Selena Del Sol after dodging the ball hammer, and that's a big win for the Lucha Under uh, Lucha Underground Dragons. Fucking hell, what am I doing? <laughs> Lucha Dra- it's not Drago out there, jeez. Uh, Lucha Dragons. And, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a good win for them. I just hope that they keep it up for them, make them proper contenders. Because, Matt, I've said this all along, it's been criminal how underused these guys have been. They've, oh, yeah. They should have been having matches. I mean, you've got to consider, like, I mean, the same as the Ascension, which is sort of like the condition that they've ended up in. Where it's like the longest reigning tag team of NXT. Like the most dominant tag team as well. Mm. And then you've got the Lucha Dragons who took them, da- who knocked off the Ascension. Yeah. But what's actually happening when they all get to Raw? Nothing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, all, we, all we're asking for is just to be put in regular matches. And it seems like like almost a month can go at a time and you won't see the Lucha Dragons around. It's, yeah. it's, it's quite sad. Um, but yeah, good win for them, and at the very least, I mean, they gave him a win over Sheamus and Barrett. I mean, yeah, not so much Barrett, they'll give him tons of losses, but Sheamus, they at least protect a little bit, so that's got to say something, I think, to how yeah. they're looking at these guys. Oh, God, the Lucha, Lucha Dragon song stuck on my head now. You just want to throw your hands up going Lucha, Lucha. We were doing that at the live Raw, actually, with like yeah. many people in like our row doing it, but we were doing it loud and proud, so there we are. Zeb Coulter speaks to Jack Swagger backstage. Swagger wonders what the hell is going on with Mex America and how can he buy one from McDonald's? Coulter wants... <laughs> can I, what's a Mex America? Can I have it with cheese? Can I have it with cheese? Coulter wants two great nations to merge together and then they can be racist to all the other countries. Yeah. He even wants Canada to join if they weren't so simple-minded. Yeah. Take that, Bret Hart. Hmm, yeah. Yeah. Screw you, Jericho. That's it. Del Rio then shows up and tells Swagger, stay away from his boyfriend. I mean, his manager, uh, Zeb Coulter. Or there will be trouble. Or there will be trouble. Because he stands, like, really awkward, sort of, side-on, like, (laughs) full front to the camera, but looking at... Swagger, so it's kind of threatening. Yeah, I, 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 I caught that as well. It was a little. <laughs> just like, the hey, you don't go near him. Yeah. Uh, if he had a cape, he could easily just whisp up his his left hand and just escape to his cape. <laughs> just like get the maracas out, and then it's like Dennis. <laughs> He's got like a, a rapier on his left hand. He just uh, just cuts a, an ADR just in his fucking shirt. <laughs> it's all right. We're being so racist right now. Well, we're not really. We're not. We're not. It's just the way he's standing. He he started it. Alberto Del Rio shows. Yeah, his fault. Uh, his fault. Um, I actually think Del Rio and Swagger. I think that's a pretty good, decent next step for Del Rio. It's a rival with history, and it works. I think. Yeah, and they've worked fun. together, and they've actually had some good matches. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think I think honestly that's a that's a step I've got no problem. with. And oddly enough, I was like, oh no, I was about to say something that was completely wrong and mm-hmm. stupid. I was like, I think I've missed Swagger. I don't think I have. Well, I saw a clip of him on SmackDown. He looks good. Yeah, I yeah. like Swagger as a face when he's just using these in these situations. But I mean, he's, you like him as much. I mean, as... I still I still I still hate the Swagger bomb. I'm not a big fan of Swagger, but he, he's his it's, application. His, fin- his finisher still sounds like a Jersey Shore cocktail. <laughs> it does actually. Yeah, take this drink; it'll give you plenty of swagger. Yeah, <laughs> it's the swagger bar. Swag, swag, swag. <laughs> uh, oh, in the true British way, it'd be full of banter. <laughs> yeah, he's a, 
say the, the bad thing you've got. Don't do it, Matt. Don't don't go there. Don't go there. The cheeky and Don't notes. tell people about Geordie Shaw because they'll you. We know our fans are American. They'll they'll YouTube that shit and they'll think the worst of our country. So don't uh, do that. All right. The, the, oh, the, Arch, the Archbishop of Banterbury. They're, 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 I, I, I can't believe what I've done. I've opened up a, a, a whole new world to these people and they're going to hate me for it. <laughs> um, our truth then. Just think Jersey Shore with like a terrible accent. Yeah, Jersey, yeah and and not as well produced, shall we say. And to, to be honest, was, I would say idiotic people, but they had fucking Just... Snooki on their show. So yeah, still, each to their own. Our truth versus Alberto Del Rio. And I can't roll my R's, but you'd expect Lillian Garcia to. I know. She didn't even try. I bet bet it's because she's already used her one rolling of the R and she accidentally did it for our truth Yeah, that's it. That's it. She she, 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 she did it too early. She fired her gun too early, which is a lot of problem for a lot of guys, but I'm sure Lillian decided. Do you know one thing I reckon would have got Del Rio over so much more? Go on. Fuck bringing him back in with Zeb Coulter. We need Rodriguez. Yeah, but you bring him with Rodriguez and he's an immediate face because of how, how much people love Rodriguez and they want to... I don't care. You just I, miss, I miss Rodriguez. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think they have any intention of bringing him back, to be honest, but there we are. Um, so Truth hits his finisher midway through the match. His scissors kick. Del Rio kicks out at two and treats it like an ordinary suplex. No selling the damage it caused. He's just like, yep, yeah, okay, I'm back up. <laughs> it's like, that. Yep. He's gained John Cena powers over beating him. During... I, I, I still got wonder though. Like, I, we knew what the way this match was going because our truth was already in the ring, mm-hmm. got the complete job entrance. Yeah, I, but I wonder what is Del Rio's finish? Yeah, he seems to have that foot stomp. Seems to be his new deal now. Like so. that foot stomp, or just the kick in the head. I, don't know. I kind of which one he's just like. Just do the arm breaker, damn it. Yeah, maybe he's saving the arm breaker for a big pop. I don't know, but we'll, we'll see. Um, or is it the cross arm breaker that he used to call it? Yeah. Uh, so in the middle of this match, Matt, they start showing tweets about Bray Wyatt because it was the East, you know, obviously two matches ago. That's what happened, right? Yeah. Um, and then the commentary take time out of the match to talk about Bray Wyatt. I hate that talking in there. All the I, fans, I I knew you'd hate that. Call of Duty Soul Warfare being the next WWE game coming out. I I, I hate that short shit. Yeah. commentary taking time to call out call the match to talk about I I despise it I really do uh, Del Rio gets the win as you say with that double foot stomp from that t- tree of woe sort of position it does look it does look dirty I'm not, I don't have a problem that finishing match is. oh yeah it looks fine I just I still wonder what his actual finish act is yeah I saw like uh, some messages people saying about this match being really great and our truth being awesome I didn't really see that I thought this was just a generic match I didn't think that much standard that much. standard Bog standard match yeah too exciting. No. I mean, hey, I couldn't even get through the through the uh, table for three with our truth in it, so I let Lone get through a match of his. Well, yeah, I don't think you even started to listen to it. So there we go. It's, 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 he's doing music. <laughs> Yay! I oh. Yeah, I don't. I don't really get. <laughs> Backstage, the tag champs New Day catch up with Rollins. They tell him his team is complete for the New Day is here. And Rollins obviously goes, well, you're missing one guy, but the New Day summon all of their unicorn powers to bring... I know, right? It's like some Final Fantasy summon is Xavier Woods. He's just using them red materia and he, and he, and he arrives. Uh, Rollins gets into the dancing mood before heading off. Uh, the New Day are just awesome. No, I'll never dare to be sour with them ever again. So, yeah. There we are. Because we did kind of rip them off at the start of the show, but there we are. Well, you did, Matt. It's not. It's not a rip-off. It's a tribute. It's a tribute. That's exactly what it is. And uh, you were damn good, I might add. Um, for people thinking, by the way, we had tested to see which one of us was better at doing that. I was not very good at all. So, no. there we are. Um, Jojo speaks to the boss, Sasha Banks. The boss says she always delivers when it matters. And, of course, the fans want Sasha. Of course they would want to. She's coming for the championship. And uh, we definitely needed much more Sasha Banks than what we've had so far. And when I mean Sasha Banks, I mean Sasha Banks. Not Sasha Banks as part of Team Bad. I need Sasha Banks. That's who I need. So, yeah. yeah. Legit so, boss. Mm-hmm. So Becky Lynch, Paige, Sasha Banks and Brie Bella in a four-way match to crown our new number one contender. I mean, WWE going number one contender. Crazy. I'm loving it. Good stuff. 
funny enough, it actually made for one of their better matches here, considering because it actually meant something. It was actually fun. quite a good match. Mm. And uh, what's, what's took Bree out of the equation? Yeah, to be honest, most most of it involved the other three, not really Bree. Um, so I, I, I yeah, because I still shake my head with every single kick that Bree Bella does. And uh, my message to Daniel Bryan is sometimes to help the people you love. You have to tell them what they're doing is something ridiculous. You know, it's like if they if they if they dye Stop their hair. Stop shouting! It's simple. It's I, I I mean I could easily sum it down into two things. Stop shouting Bree mode, and stop kicking people. Come on, Nikki! Oh, I'm that one. Yeah, I'm that one. Right. Let's go, Nikki! Oh, come on, Nikki! Oh God, it's, it's... people were hearing that in their nightmares. Jeez. Uh... Um. <laughs> oh god oh. no I just went a really bad place I just imagined that uh, her just being uh, you know it, 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 on the sidelines or her well Nikki and, and uh, John is having sex and so come like, on Nikki <laughs> come on Nikki and Tina's gonna oblige of course so there we are <laughs> oh, okay maybe you did take it one step too far <laughs> <laughs> I, there, Matt, I had to bring in a shameless pay-per-view plot, did I not? So there that's we very are. true. There we are. Come on, Nikki. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry to all involved. I really am. Um, a huge spot here um, was Sasha being superplexed by Becky powerbombed Bree and Paige. Obviously, Sasha took the mega bump in this. It was a spot that instantly got the fans way more connected, kicked them up a gear. They got really into this match after that. We got a This Is Awesome chant. We did, we did, because it was fun. It was. Paige hits the rampage on Becky Lynch to win, and then she obviously she's going to move on to face Charlotte at Survivor Series. I thought it was a good match, as you said there, Matt. I thought this was uh, a lot of fun, actually. Yeah. One of the better ones since this revolution, revolution has started. And I thought the flurry with Lynch and Sasha at the end showed shades of their excellent match at NXT. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, quite a while ago, so there is that. After the match, Brian Saxton interviews Paige. She calls Banks, Bree, and Lynch are losers. And anyone who cheers for them are losers. And if they cheer for Charlotte, then they'll be losers as well. Because we're all losers. What about you, Matt? Are you a loser? I, I am a loser. You're a loser? Oh wow, you're quite quite manly to admit that. Yeah, on this show. I five wanted Banks. Four hundred and fifty subscribers, Matt doesn't seem like losers to me. That's what I'd say. I wanted Banks to win. I did want Banks to win, but I knew that's where they were going. They've already got the storyline set up, so yeah. Don't care. Don't, don't give a fuck. Just want Sasha. I Sasha want I want I want Banks and Charlotte. Yeah, that's what we want, yeah. Um a serviceable heel promo. Um decent stuff from the women this week. Wait a minute, Matt, did, did I just praise the, the, the women on the roster this week? Yeah. That's our present for episode 100! The women gave us a present! Oh, they're so good, they are to us, they are. It's because we've been, we've been critical, but we've, we've been, was it, was it, we've been harsh but fair. That's, that's what we've been. Yeah. That's, that's what we've been. Like we haven't been cruel, we've been honest. That's right, that's right. Renee Young talks with Charlotte backstage. She asks her thoughts on the new number one contender. Charlotte is apparently glad that Paige won. I'm sure Becky Lynch loved that particular nugget of information. And she wants Paige to keep coining her as Flair's daughter. Because uh, that's obviously, of course, overlooking her. And then she says that she'll show what she's made of and show that she, what she, that she earned her title, didn't just wasn't just given it. Um, I'm hoping this rivalry can turn into something that we can get excited about. It does have potential. I know Matt's like, I don't give a shit. So maybe not to so many people, but that's because I, I, I give a shit. Just you'd much, you'd give much more of a shit to someone else. If it was Sasha Banks. It ma- this makes sense as the story, as a story. Mm. I'm fine with that. I mean, hell, I reckon... Like, I reckon we're going to get a good match out of Charlotte and Paige if mm. WWE let them. Mm. So, it's not the fact that I'm upset by it. I just think we'd get better matches with other options. Well, I think that's... I mean, Paige is one of those people that she, she she's capable of good matches, but she's had like two years on the roster of not having very good ones. So, yeah. it's... Um... It, it, she does kind of reek of the old guard more than the new guard, and I think that's part yeah. of it. Yeah. But hopefully here she can remind everyone that she was NXT champion. She was part of that. I still think her and Emma started the revolution. Oh, no yeah. One, no one really cares who started the revolution, but for reference, I think it was them. So, yeah. 
But uh, hopefully there's something that could be good out of this match. Survivor Series match then to finish off the show. New Day say that their survivors, this is on the way to the ring, would survive being attacked by the disgusting table poachers, the Dudleys. Their favourite band is Survivor. Their favourite reality show is Survivor. Their favourite Destiny Child song. Is Survivor. Do you like Survivor yeah. from Destiny Child? It's not a bad song. It's alright. And their favourite book is Lone Survivor. Their favourite movie is also Lone Survivor. Yeah. Their favourite porno, Big Unicorn Butt Survivor. We know Big E loves using his big ending on that movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It got there. This is what happens when I drink, guys, okay? You guys want me to drink and enjoy this show? Then you're going to get sexual references coming out of it. So, there you are. There you are. I'm having more now, so I can even get more of them out there. So, there you are. Uh, they go on to air guitar Seth Rollins' theme song, which was uh, some fun, even though Big E looked like he was possessed. He, um... He, he he looked like he was convulsing rather than playing air guitar, but still. See, this is now the point where I just mentioned earlier. Where was his damn title? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, obviously someone had forgotten it, uh, you know, see, in general. Uh, I'm so confused. Guess who's back, Matt? Guess who's back? Back again. Back again. <laughs> Uso's <laughs> back. Tell a friend. Guess who's back? Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think great news. Obviously, Uso's being back. They've been forced onto the sidelines for quite a while. But um, one of the things that we said actually a, a couple of weeks ago, funny enough, was like, well, the Uso should be back soon. We could really do with some Uso's matches because we were saying about the New Day constantly wrestling the Dudleys. Yep. Well, now we've got the Uso's back, so hopefully we can get a few different. I'd love to see an Uso's Dudleys TLC match. I think that would be. Awesome. You put Uso's New Day in there Dudley, as well. Yeah, I was going to say, Uso's Dudley New Day. Yeah, that's a match I'd like to see for the belts. So, um, I don't know. My... Oh, we'll, do, we'll do the other the other two first. What do you mean? All right, so... What do you mean? Oh, yeah, so it was Ryback comes out. Oh, to be fair, that was expected, feuding with Owens. Yeah, and then obviously Dean Ambrose because he's buddies with, yeah. with Reigns. So go on, you're going. Whilst Ambrose did get a big pop... Mm-hmm. I don't think he should have been last. No, I agree with you. I think Uso should have been I last. think they should have like stalled a little bit. Mm. Sort of like, oh, we've got, like, have Dean Ambrose first, because that's the obvious one. Yeah, right back, because he's a little bit of a shot, but fair enough, he's in a rivalry, whatever, yeah. Yep. And then sort of like, oh, you don't seem to have anyone. Oh, what yeah, get a some, shame. Get someone on the mic. You know, get runs on the mic. Is that is that all you can muster up? Is that <laughs> it? You can't, even get, you can't even get a full team. All lights power down. Cue the, um, cue the war dance on the stage. Yeah, I think that would have been awesome. I think that would really... But obviously they chose, obviously chose not to do that. And the commentators were going mental about it, going, oh, they're back. It's like, well, you could have presented it a little bit better. Yeah. Still. There we are. We like Usos and we want them to be shown properly. That's right. That's right. So um, Xavier Woods take uh, you know takes Mark Henry's role from last year's Survivor Series and gets eliminated in the first exchange of the match. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that was great though. Just like ah, super kick. That's right. Kofi oh. Kofi goes next, and then the Usos both get eliminated to square up. They did have a good showing. The Usos they they showed all yeah. their, a lot of their moves, some good super kicks. They're looking in good shape. Well, obviously, it was only one of them that was injured, but both of them still look in good shape. Like, I, it still bugs me, though, <laughs> to this day with the Usos, when they're like, Shades of Daddy! What, because he did the running stick? That's, that wasn't Rikishi! Yeah, like, yeah, I thought that was... Uh, well, that was, that was Umaga used to do that. Yeah. He was that uncle. Yeah, after that's weird. Um, so the match uh, kicks up a gear at that point. And, uh, the when match it's is, 3v3, yeah. Yeah, it starts kicking up a gear, which is really cool. I mean, it was good to start off with. Ryback takes out Big E, and then Rollins deals with the big guy himself with a big pedigree. Yeah. Ambrose then soaks up a ton of damage, but plays off a mistake from Rollins to Dirty Deeds Owens, which makes it two on one. I, I, you know what? I really liked that, because you had Owens um, just sort of like, stop, sh- stop doing it. Stop shouting at him. Just do it. Just yeah. do what you're planning on doing. And there's Rollins just like, I'm better than you. Don't forget who I am. Ah, and then suddenly it's like, right, here I go, flying, here comes my flying knee, oh, did I waste all that time? Hmm. 
I'm sure that next, ne- you know, on the next Raw, if Rollins hadn't gotten injured, you're probably looking at an Owens Rollins match champion. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably what's going to happen. But obviously, that you would have, you would have had that match that was the bait to get Owens in. Yeah, that's exactly what it is, you know. So because of the fact that they had such a uh, a pronounced disagreement here in this match, so I'm sure that's what would have happened. But obviously, yeah. now that won't. Um, Rollins tries to retreat as he's the lone guy, but he's caught multiple times and battered all over the place. Then Rollins attacks both men with a steel chair, which causes the DQ. Reigns rises at the right moment. Superman punches Rollins and then ends the show in what was a very fun match. The last hour of this show was pretty fucking decent. I will give props. Do you know one thing? Mm -hmm. This Raw, I thought, was pretty decent. I thought it was alright. I thought the first two hours were a little bit lackluster. I thought the last hour was uh, very, very good. But, I think it's probably because I enjoyed the Wyatt promo more than you. Yeah, I think that's probably the kicker. I still think it was good, by all means. It's certainly not in the realm of the bad set of rules we got before, um, you know, the last pay-per-view. What's that? I've forgotten. Oh, I, so. the, the worst part is, I, I'm worried if it's... Like, we, we talked about this with uh, with Solo Monster, which is sort of like, how far do the ratings have to go before mm. they really, like, shit a brick? Yeah. Um could it now be a little too late? Because apparently ratings are still falling. Yeah, I think that they're still suffering over the fact that, uh, listen, you can't fix things overnight. If things have been bad for a little while, you're going to feel the effects for a little while. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, like, like, oh, Raw started to improve. Like, hopefully that carries on. Yeah, hopefully. But yeah. now, like, obviously the biggest news story of the week for wrestling, mm. with Rollins out... It could go anywhere, really. It could that's... Be- it's a dangerous territory they're now in. Hmm. They could e- it could very easily that the show plummets and it gets really, really bad because they don't know what to do. Or they get a little bit, you know, creative, funny enough, for their namesake. As the job title. Yeah. And, they, and they give us something a little bit different. They give us something a little bit out of the norm and then it'll be fun and exciting. They could, it could go either way. It's certainly not going to be the same of what it is now because Seth Rollins was so ingrained into the show's DNA. Even look over this show, he had multiple segments, multiple backstage segments. He had a match. He was in the opening of the show. He's yeah. everywhere, and now he's not. So, still. All in all, like I said though, Matt, I thought it was an alright show. You thought it was. I thought you, you thought it was even better than that. But I'll take alright. No, to be day. fair, to be perfectly honest, you say I say even better. I was like, I still wouldn't say it was a great rule. I think. It was, I a, think last it, was, week was it was a good rule. I think last I was, week was better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 but I'm not going to knock it because we've been having so many bad roars in a row. I'll take two good ones on the bounce. Honestly, I really will. So, yeah, I'm all right with that. As, as long as they give the Survivor Series match at the pay per view an actual stipulation, a consequence, a reward, if you will, then the fact that we had um, the same match type on this show, it will be alleviated a little bit. It will look more yeah. like an exhibition. Right. To be fair, if we're getting Brothers of Destruction in it anyway, then does it really matter? It's still gonna, yeah, it's still gonna be a, uh, a that's gonna be a drawing match for the show, so that'll be all right. And um, yeah, I, I, the first two hours unfortunately didn't do enough for the fans to stick around. We saw that big drop off, that two hundred thousand drop off in the ratings. But I do think that last hour was um, it had a good payoff. I think it was very good yeah. that last hour because uh, you had that women's match which was fairly decent and the main event which was good. So all in all, all right. Yeah. So, Matt, is there anything else that you would like to speak about on this 100th episode of the Let's Talk Wrestling podcast? I believe I am good. I can't think of much else. Are we actually done? Are we done here on this show? Are you sure you don't want to call up Nuba and get a um, a lift? No. I mean, uh, I know you need to go check on um, your draft queens. I do. I do. Pile up the points, pick up the cash. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed that, by the way. <laughs> we had a lot of funny recording all that shit. We barely could keep ourselves um, from laughing, to be honest. We? Speak for yourself. <laughs> um, so, you know, in general, I guess we'll just talk a little bit about the show and where we hope it goes for the next time 100 episodes. We, by all means, guys, don't worry. We're planning on being here for episode 200. Of course we are. And... Um, we hope by episode 200, because that's another two years down the line almost. I very much hope at that point that we've grown much further than where we are now. And I hope you guys do like the new graphics and the new intro and some of the new extras that we've put on. You can see there's a new logo on the on the not just on the Facebook page but on the YouTube stuff as well. And there's a new banner on the YouTube. So there's a lot of stuff that we've worked into to 
uh, give the show a nice big fresh, um, you know, fresh outlook going forward. Because yeah. we do, I mean, we do know we do like to keep the show fresh as we can. If you guys have any suggestions in regards to any new segments you might like on the show, anything you'd like us to cover, then the best way is to get in contact with us. Especially now you've got the Facebook page to do so. So you can obviously give us a contact there. From the, the bottom of my heart, this is very genuinely now, going at the end of it, just rattling off. Um, this show has been not just a lot of fun, it's been very good for myself, um, just in general, in terms of giving a project um, something, not just something to do, but something to really sink myself into. Um, a lot of people may, I'm getting a little bit, little bit deep now, but a lot of people may know that, um, you know, I, 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 with my leg as busted as it is, I spend a lot of time in regards of just me and my, and my PC and with the, with my kids and stuff like that. So it gave me a project to be able to sink my time into and, uh, you know, give me something that, you know, obviously something for me and Matt to be able to, to share as well going forward. Um, using all that history and knowledge of wrestling that we had just had naturally over through the years and even just taking bumps ourselves in a very minute basis yeah. you know before we could give our own perspective on wrestling uh, being able to take it from a fan that isn't so much you know we have our own thoughts and our own reviews and our own opinions of course but we like to try and take ourselves sometimes out of the the situation look at it from an outside perspective so that's one of the things that we've really enjoyed doing here on the show um but yeah just like Thank you guys for being able. We, Matt, we, I don't think I'm being too far fetched when I say this. When I say that it doesn't matter really that we have the fan base that we do now, in the sense of whether or not we would have kept trying or not. We would have got to episode 100 with five fans, but I'm not going to sit here and lie to people and say that we would have enjoyed it as much. We certainly wouldn't have. Uh, yeah. w w would you agree with that? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's can't, uh, can't at all disagree with it. No, we're very happy to have the fan base we do and the growing fan base that we do and the, uh, the you guys leaving your questions and, and your thoughts on the show and sharing your experiences of wrestling and, you know, leaving that in the comments. We love hearing about it. And uh, it's been something that we never thought would get to the point of where it was. We never thought that we would be able to um, interview the, some of the people that we have and some of the people that we're trying to get to interview. It's not going to be our last one that we're going to do. Um, the people that we've been able to speak to in terms of collaboration stuff like that's been it's been fun. Um, we never, I don't think me myself and Matt ever saw ourselves as being able to put forward our show to someone, let's say, like Solomon's dude, one of the biggest um, podcasters in wrestling. Oh yeah. And for him to actually look at us and go, you know what? Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's do let's do a show. We never looked at ourselves as being. I don't want to say like good enough for that because I think we always were quite proud of what we were able to do, but we never saw ourselves as, uh, as that being attainable. Uh, I guess I'm trying to get that over, but that was awesome to be able to do. And I'm hoping we're going to be doing more of it. We're sending messages out to people and uh, we're talking to people to have other stuff going on. But as for the weekly shows, what can you expect going forward? The weekly shows, of course, next week, we just go straight back to work. It's one Oh one next uh, next week in a month's time we've got a two year anniversary that will include the let's talk wrestling awards that will be fun and um yeah then we'll just carry on as as, as we are throughout the rest That's of the year it. people that may not know i'm rambling on a bit but i think people will appreciate this we alluded to this sometime in our early videos but this technically isn't our 100th episode because we actually did let's talk wrestling before this yeah but we did a few like trial episodes Back when I was doing gaming videos, this is fucking years ago now. I don't I don't do gaming videos anymore. Um, I just grew out of love with it, and I I've still been getting loads of re loads recently on like Facebook where it's just sort of like you've been tagged in, like oh I remember. Oh all that all that stuff, yeah. But like um, you know, I fell in love, I fell out of love of doing the gaming videos. I didn't feel the the thing for it. But one thing I I, I kept enjoying doing was getting in contact with 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 you know with matt and saying you know let's just talk wrestling for an hour and record it and i'll put it up yeah. and then people seem to listen to it so we decided to do the show do it on its own channel but there was a big like six month break because my my second daughter was born and yeah obviously you know 
Lo and behold. I love Matt and I love doing the show, but that takes precedence. You know, being a, a father, that always takes precedence. So once I felt that she was old enough, that I had done all the base work and she wouldn't be waking me up at one o'clock in the morning, we thought, let's give it, let's give it, a, let's give it a proper go and we'll see where it goes. And Matt was the one, you can thank Matt, Matt was the one that pushed us to do all the pay-per-view recordings. You can take yeah. credit. You can take credit for that. And I shall. Um, and then now it's <laughs> now it's just part of our tradition that we do. All it's just things. a regular thing. It is. It is. Um, and it's something that we love taking time out of our week to do. And we take every Saturday night now, eight o'clock. You get it on a Sunday morning or Sunday, whatever. You know, Saturday at eight. That's when we record. We have a laugh. We love hearing from you guys. And um, genuinely, I'm not talking about wrestling, but talking about the show. Um, just thank you very much. And one of the things you can actually go back and you can see over some of the videos when I'm thinking when I'm thinking especially appreciative, there's actually a little note in the description just saying thank you for the support that we receive from you guys. Is there anything that you you want to say to the fans before we uh, we go off and I drink a little bit more alcohol and uh, we reminisce outside of recording? carry on reminiscing? Um... <laughs> you covered it all. <laughs> I, I do that every single week, don't I? Just You're getting very. You are too good for that. Oh, mate, I'm I guess it's over the over the many a year. Um, <laughs> just, just like take it all. Just I don't know. It's been tough. Yes. I think really, even sort of like the original sort of set up the sort of videos over just sort of video game gameplay. Gameplay, yeah. Yeah, it's just bizarre from there to where it's can come now. Yeah. It makes me feel weird that, you know, where where will it be, like I said, in episode 200, where we not have, maybe we might have the exact same amount of fans as we have now, in which case we'll be over the moon. Who knows? There might just be a chance that we have 4,500 fans instead of 450 fans. It, who knows? There might be a chance. You know, the, who knows? You know, the, the way that it goes. I mean, we um, we got about, so I think from episode 1 to 50, I think we were rocking about 100. From 50 to 100, we got like 350. So like, Growth breeds growth, and we're going to set our our goals very very high going forward. Yeah. So, um, that's all our plans. We're not planning on giving up working on it, and we worked very hard on this episode, as you can imagine. We've done weeks of preparation and extra recordings and that sort of stuff, but we do it because we enjoy the show, and we do it because um, it's a thank you. This episode really is is more of a celebration, more of a thank you um, to you guys and the support that we get. So. From that, Matt, do you want to give them the Twitter handle? Of at Talk Russell Pod. That is it. And you know what? For the very first time, I'll give you, at the end of the show, the Facebook link. Facebook.com. Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast is the link there. Sorry, slash Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast on the Facebook. You can see it right there on the on the, the graphics of the, of the show. Um, also, one of the other things as well on the show, one of the main things I may play around with is actually tearing out the audio of the video and then placing that for download on our Facebook account. So if you guys feel like that's something you might want to do, I'll look into it for you. So there, that is an option now on Facebook. Yeah. yeah it's just Facebook actually isn't too bad for actually store and stuff like that. So. But we'll have a look into it. We hope you have a great week. Thank you again. And um, we'll catch you next week for episode 101. We'll see you soon. Catch you guys. Thank you a lot. Bye.